Hi guys, I just wanted to jump on here with little Bo. Say hey, Bo. Hi. Okay. Um, and we just wanted to let everyone know about our upcoming live shows. Ooh. We have several coming up. The first one is Queers Live. Bo, tell them. Oh, babe, it's inspired uh, from the very inspired by I should say. Yeah, it's the very by. first <laughs> queer a uh, divas live, uh, starring all your favorite divas. But we're just uh, putting a little queer spin on it. We're gonna have uh, so many great people: Larry Owens, Cole Scola, Josh Sharp, Aaron Jackson. Uh, yes, Peter Smith. Peter Smith and. And more to be announced, more queer. More to be announced. Musical directed by the one and only Henry Kapersky. Ooh. This is on Monday, November 26th at Joe's Pub. The one and only. It's our very first ever Las Culturistas show at Joe's Pub. We love the folks over there. We're going to be, so you great. know, recording a little video promo for it in the coming mm. weeks. You might see it. And you can get tickets at the Joe's Pub website. So please head over and do that. And then we have the gag, of course. It's I Don't Think So Honey Live at the Bell House on November 30th. Yes, this is going to be um, a pretty new batch of folks. We are mm. really going to uh, show you some new faces, darling. Our last one was like a Legends Ball type gig, but this is going to be such a fun, fresh experience. It's going to be so great. I can't wait for it. Yeah. You got to get your tickets to our I Don't Think So Honey Live at the Bell House on November 30th. And if you're on the West Coast, honey, I'm coming to you and I'm going to be doing I Don't Think So Honey Live at the Regent in downtown LA on December 5th. The lineup will be announced shortly, as will the Bell House lineup, but this is going to be so much fun. I loved our show that we did at Echoplex. It was so fun. I can't believe I'm missing this one. Uh, But you know what? It's for a good reason. Okay. Which is your wedding to yourself. Yes. Just kidding. He has work. Um, So listen, I cannot wait. And then, selfishly, I want to just plug a little show that I do here in New York City at the Duplex. It's called Have You Heard of Christmas? Oh, I love this show. Thank you, baby. I'm really excited. It's going to be on December 11th, December 18th, and December 22nd. So I'm going to do that show three times. And I really want you guys to come. You can get tickets, um, which are on sale right now. Ooh, those are the shows, and that's the gauntlet. Special guests. Special guests. And that's musical directed by Henry Kapersky as well. Yes. Oh, I can't wait for all of these shows. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be at three out of four of them for yeah, sure. Honey. So uh, please get those tickets and check them out. Yes. Forever. <laughs> Dog. Look, man. Where? Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, my. Bowen, look over there. Wow. Is that oh, culture? Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las Culturistas. Ding dong. Las Culturistas calling. Ugh. <laughs> What's a ugh? The the Halloween. Yeah. We're recording this on the 27th. It's a debacle. We just had a conversation, a quick cursory little conversation with our guest. You're angry at me. No. Uh, I'm a little angry at you, but I'm just, I'm angry at, I, but I should be angry at just the system. I think, thank you so much. I always say, don't be angry at me, be angry at the system. It's rule of culture number 14. Don't, don't be, be angry, angry at me, me be, be angry, angry at, at the system. system. And it's the system. It's Halloween in New York is just, you, everyone feels, you feel like you have to fall in line with. What, it is what, what it's the bad part about the gay community <clears throat> blown up a hundred thousand times. Sure. Well, you're choosing to <laughs> magnify the, the Can que- you tell the I'm self-conscious? To it. Um, yes. I, I feel as though like, here's the thing. I have, a couple, a few costumes I could wear. Yeah, I have one slutty costume. Uh-huh. It's a little slutty sailor. What's, what's your slutty sailor that I got from my shoot with Logo. Oh yeah, you got Logo stuff. So by the way, um, Dave Mazzoni and I are doing some videos for Logo, and you guys should check them out. <laughs> Very fun. Uh, so they they actually I I offhand mentioned that I kind of liked the way I looked in the costume, sure. and then I looked over and it was on my things at the end of the day. Someone, some PA had been like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, take this home. They wanted to fuck you, perchance. Yeah. Um, but. And whoever that person is, I celebrate that idea. Okay. And you have my number from a call. What are your options? Um, my, and then I have Gay Jackson Maine. Yeah. Which I said that, and our guest said, "Wow." Well. And so now I don't want to do that. I but and th- what? Aren't you so glad that the, uh, that our guest? Absolutely, gave I think you we a, need more an, transparency. A candid response. Yes. One hundred percent. I'm grateful for and thankful for the guest. And then what was your third? My third was the one we were going to do together, which was. A Killing Eve killing moment. Eve, sort of best friend's costume. Of course, you would be Sandra O, oh, and I would be Villanelle. You would be um, uh, Jodie Comer. Jodie Comer. Famously her name. Famously her name. 25 years old. Can you believe it? Are you fucking Isn't serious? That fucked up? That is so fucked up. She's so good. She's so good. But here's the thing. I feel like she doesn't have like an iconic look. I would have to sure. stay attached to your side at all times. I know. It is one of those things where it's like if... if if we're decoupled, I would sort of make sense as Sandra, but like everyone would, would be like, make deep sense. Are you? A- but you would. You could just be another Allie. You could be Allie. Why? I guess. I mean, I guess. All right. Okay. I, well, here's the thing. 
last year we had a really good costume and it's going to be hard to top. We did it Big Little Lies. We Big did, Little Lies. I was uh, I Patronata. And I was Celeste. early episodes Nicole Kidman. Yes. Still um, racked with secrets and guilt. Sure. Um, we'll figure it out. But uh, I'm so glad that we have this conversation about the culture. And by the time this comes out, it'll be well into November. <laughs> But. And here's the thing. Also, I don't want anyone to worry about me because I know I will turn it out before my first party of the evening. Absolutely. Of which there are two. Of which there are two. Um, and we're going to see our guest at the second one. We're going to see our guest at the second one. And he has, and he's just keeping it simple, streamlined. I love it. He's not, he's not falling for it. Maybe okay? he mouths. Maybe he mouths. We um, don't know. He's a very creative person. I love, I love our guest so much. Deeply. Deeply. Have for many years. Since Jeffrey and Cole Casserole. Uh, with our other lovely, lovely the pal, beloved, the beloved Cola Scola. Scola. Um, you but, know who was a huge Jeffrey South fan, Henry. Henry, of course. Since since, you, since young. Since young. Yeah. Since since since, young. since 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 like way back. I think yeah, Jeffrey and Cole Casserole. Perfect. Um, he is, and a, then we were at the same party as Henry Kapersky, my my ex, and then we were at the same. We were at the duplex one night. You came, I think, <sighs> to see who was it. What's that? What, we I think we went to like maybe it was like Stop. Pat Regan show We're, or Catherine Cohen show. He wants to talk, so let's just bring him in. I'm just gonna say Henry said you have to introduce me to Jeffrey. Oh, right, and I was he like, was, okay, was, yes, so that struck. can happen. Okay, yes. so so he's being so good about just the decorum of of all of this. Because he gets he gets it. He gets the he gets the Jeffrey biz. Himself gets it. Now say his little credits, and then we can go on. He's an actor, author, um, celebrated comedian. Um, okay, so uh, search party, search party. Mark on search party. Fantastic, truly like the gay the gay straight man and all of it. Getting married this season. El- yes, and Elliot Elliot is not the straight man at all, and Elliot is just truly insane. A goofy. Oh well, goofy, but also mentally real John Early type. Real John Early type. Um, and meanwhile, Mark is a is a huge Jeffrey Self type. But um, anyway, said his name already. Uh, uh, you can read his books, Drag Teen, um, or a very very bad thing. And um, oh God, Jeffrey Live, I loved. I love. I uh, oh yeah. Um and and I hope I hope maybe there's a comeback. But you uh, know the, the live space is interesting right that now. That was my first. Um that was my first. The live space was huge. Um but that was my first also introduction to then House Twink now star of Heather's Brendan, Brendan Scannell. Scannell. Oh my God, House Twink fell in love. Uh, fell in love and um oh my God and uh just iconic role in Thirty Rock. One of like the <laughs> I love the, and I didn't even know this was Jeffrey until years later and I was Liz, like who was that? Liz Lemon's gay cousin. <laughs> um Randall Randy. Yeah, Randall. I'm talking now. He's oh my the god, broken! It is Jeffrey Sell. I wasn't sure when we could talk. I know. No, we're so well, sorry. We, we didn't asked you a direct question. question. Well, I love. The, I really respect the decorum of podcasts. Famously, thank you, thank and, you for um, doing that. No one does anymore. Yeah. No. 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 Um, they don't. You know, these days. These but days. thank you. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. I'm such a fan of you guys. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Okay. Talk about your Halloween plan. And this okay. Is, okay. So we're all going to see each other at a party yes. in in, in um, mere hours. I don't know. I was kind of excited because I had no Halloween plans and I thought, okay, great. No one's going to get their shit together. I'm not going to have to do anything. Help rock. Yeah. But then someone planned something and now I feel like I actually have to do something because right. I always show up at Halloween parties not in a costume. Mm. And then I feel even more in- uncomfortable. I think it is I think it's worse to, to be the person who looks like they A don't care or B thought they were too cool. You never want to be that. And person. is smug enough to be like, well my costume is me. You yeah. know some pithy I thing. actually even like Right when I said that, I had something that I was going to use for I don't think my I don't think so, honey, mm-hmm, later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I might actually do what I was just about to say for that because I have a strong feeling about it. But anyway, I find Halloween very overwhelming. I loved it as a kid. I thought it was great. Yes. Mimi from the Drew Carey show was among oh, many Mimi. wonderful, memorable costumes. But oh my nowadays, God. I, yeah, I agree. There's something, there's a pressure within the gays, especially. Yeah. I just, I was looking at Instagram stories last night and just pissed off at every click. Just admit. <laughs> Do you want to know what it is for me? It's like I actually end up sort of, and I'm I I say this and don't get upset. Okay. I end up sort of nailing it every year. Oh, do you, Matt? Yes. I mean, as How someone who's followed you for a while, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm just Buzzfeed kidding. gay Buzzfeed um, one time it? put me on a list for best Halloween costumes. I was what? Yeah, what this what, is what? so fucking basic. It, also, I was gay imagine Harry remembering Potter. this. Imagine remembering. Uh, <laughs> I would what? remember this too. I was gay Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, sure, has sure, it? I you mean. and like literally 5,000 people have I had know, sex but- with. 5,000 is conservative. <laughs> and he's only had sex with 5,003. Um, but no, what I mean- What did you, I mean- I, I, I had the scar. Henry, sure was, Henry was 
uh, Malfoy, and yes. it was a really hot like, ooh, Malfoy and Harry Potter, sure, like go home and fanfic, finger each other yeah. scenario. God. I'm uh, I'm not a Harry Potter person, really. I don't really know the whole mythology. Love well, that. Harry Potter was a wizard. Yeah, I know that much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was famously straight. And then you, your spin on gay. it was gay. And actually, that's my spin on Jackson Maine tonight was going to be gay. Yeah. So let's go circle back to that. Like, okay. I, I, yeah, I mean, because that were you going to be Allie? No, uh, there was no plan for it to be uh, a, a friend's. Well, he's why, sticking to his. Why thing. not Allie? I feel like there's going to be a million alleys. Catherine Cohen's going to be Allie. Wait, so, what? So what Allie though? Are we talking? That was a question that she had. Got yeah. It. There's and I said that's why it's a really good dynamic costume because you could even have like a night of alleys. You really could do a so many of changes a... and yes. reveals. You could be the first time we see pop star Allie, which is the red hair and the hideous little blue dress. Yeah. You could have um uh. Uh, always I'll never remember us this way, yes. Allie, in that white kind of iconic pants. I'm more into like the leather jacket, the long sort of natural yes. dark hair, I the agree. like yelling at the father and the really forced Italian accent. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> also, there is, of course, I'll never love again, Allie, which is a kind of iconic look if you have the gown. If you have the gown, and then there's the that that orange wig that they reveal that wasn't yes. in the trailer, but yes. then you know made a big appearance. Absolutely. There are a lot of options. We're just walking through the costumes. We're just of walking the stars, of a stars board. board. I, films. you know what, I will do. Andrew Dice Clay, if you <laughs> I do, do like uh, if you do Ali, I'll be Andrew Dice Clay. And if I, you do um, Blue Jasmine, <laughs> I'll do Andrew Dice Clay <laughs> when he accosts her on the street in Blue Jasmine. Oh my god! I think we should all just do uh, VMAs, Andrew Dice Clay, and be really homophobic. Yeah, today. yeah. Let's yeah, do totally. that. Night of Andrew Dice Clay is a not a bad. <laughs> that is Night of Andrew a Dice very Clay. intriguing thing. <laughs> very fun. Well, you know who's gonna nail it? Whichever gay decides to go as Gail. Gail. Like, hi, Allie, I'm Gail. Yeah. Like, the person who leads her out onto the stage. Gail? One of- Gail is the woman who gets her out of the car at the show. Gail is a gay icon. Gail, Gail is-, is an I- gay icon. I, I, I have missed the, <laughs> the, the Twitter boat on Gail, oh, I guess. Gail is the is one of is one of three female characters in that whole in movie. In the whole film. Oh, my God. You're Think right. about it. Because Shangela doesn't so count. That's depressing. Sh- yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's Gaga. It's, it's Chappelle's wife. Uh-huh. And it's Gail. And it's, it's Gail. she's the clipboard lady who leads her from the car. Do we to... know the actress's name? No, no, but she's like really broken through in like a niche way. But it's amongst su- people it's that such... think she's an icon, it's kind of. It's very eye roll Sue from like Stranger Things. Uh, that's what I was about to yeah, say. Yeah, what's yeah, the, what's yeah, yeah. her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Sue, so that she... was the name? Oh, no, no, no. no. Barb. 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 See, so is I... she going to like end up in like a Greg Berlanti <laughs> show within minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the, it's, it's not not huge for her career. I'm in. And then you know who I found out auditioned for that part? Casey. Wilson. Wait, Casey Wilson auditioned for Gail. She said that she said on um bitch, on a, a, a bitch sash bitch yeah. sash apparently like that she had auditioned for that role that's of Gail. Very funny. Unless that was a joke, and I think that's a very funny joke. It's either way, it's brilliant. Either way, thank I like you, it. Casey. Thank you, Casey. Um, Jeffrey, are you are you like okay? You're you're firmly team like L team LA at LA camp. At well, this point. so I mean, it's very hard to discuss with people like you guys because I feel like you are such ambassadors for like gay New York. No, but no, I don't think I. Well, here's the thing. I actually saw I saw you out in LA, and I was having a great time well no i mean it, I, I, I mean it's not like we we don't have fun there no. it's a fabulous um, fun it's a fun place listen i lived here for six years mm-hmm. but i moved here when i was like 17 yeah and so it felt like when i left i was like still broke and like came to la and realized you could be still broke in la and have a better life oh that's and, and i've I, i've kind of like remained with that but also, New York just stresses me out. I feel like I stay out all night. I sleep all day. Like all the, all the, just the, the, just the boring, uh, you know, things. Have you ever lived in LA? I mm. spent uh, about a month there this summer, all yeah. told, because we were out there for two weeks. Two weeks, and then I went June. back for two weeks. Yeah. So I was, I was out there for a while. That and was the largest chunk of time. Long Island, Long Island, and then where are you? Colorado, Colorado. So it's a little more the same vibe. I sure. Guess. I mean, yeah. It's. I mean, look, they're both great places. Everybody's <laughs> back and forth. You know, if you have, you've, there's places to avoid in both places. Yeah. Love you that. know, I don't. You know, we none of us are like hanging around the like, you know, muscle queens of Hell's Kitchen, really. Sure, sure. And none of us are really hanging around the muscle queens of West Hollywood. Right. Wow. I, I think I might do uh, January well, through are. March. <laughs> In LA, I might do uh, the whole thing. mean pilot season? You know, I wasn't going to give it. Uh, I wasn't going to just give pilot season that whole chunk of the year, but Go I guess it has earned that. Go out to the coast. Um, I might. and but So now I'm kind of like happy to have had that time there in the summer to acclimate to it because it characteristically oh, has made me very stressed out. Yeah, I get that. Once you like get past it, though, I think it like becomes really groovy. Yeah. Great. 
and um, and you have roots planted there now anyway like you're 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 yeah, literally married i'm literally married i you know like i like having like a boring a grown up life there mm. That's Whereas funny. I can't figure out how to do that here. How and because I, I think it's just too expensive. Totally. Yeah. I think like now that you like have the husband and are actualized, I think like that seems like LA is a very good kind of zone. It made me kind of, I got my like FOMO really roared out when I was in LA. In LA because you felt like isolated and you're wherever you were staying. Exactly. Kind of and I was like, if I'm trying to get somewhere, it might yeah. take a long time. See, that's why I like it. Cause mm-hmm. I don't like leaving the house. Mm-hmm. I'm very like, um, I'm such a like introvert. Hello, body. <laughs> I'm such a nerd, and uh, I just uh, I'm such a nerd about my couch, and uh, <laughs> I, I, so I really like not leaving the house. Yeah. So it's good. It's very good to like, and I live like far out in like Culver City, where no one else lives. Gorgeous. So yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, just only, oh yeah, that is far. only the best. Only and the no, best. it's really far. So it's like great for no one ever drops by, no one ever <laughs> like no one ever wants to come over, yeah. wow. and then like you can be you, you don't ever have to go to other people's. It's great it's great mm. it's it's great what is what does uh husband do augustus augustus prue um he is an actor, actor. he is actor, a yes. he is a fancy like real person actor Amazing. Uh, what is augustus been in well he had um well he's as a child he was in about a boy <gasps> oh um, he was rachel vice is that rachel vice, vice. Is, it, is that who's in that movie uh i always get her about a boy from, was it's, Hugh. It's, uh, yeah it's, uh, he plays the other little boy who's okay. like she's not no, not, she, not the boy. He's not the boy. That's Nick Holt. Yeah. And then the other boy. Oh my boy god, that was Nicholas Holt. Nick Holt. That's yeah. crazy. And then the other boy is Augustus. Rachel Weiss's son. And yet he's like, he gets like jealous that of Hugh Grant dating his mom. He's Wow. Um oh, that's that, a so that, meaty yeah, role. It was a meaty role. <laughs> so that was his first thing. And then he um he's, you know, he had a show on CBS uh, last year called Pure Genius. It was a medical yes. procedural that he was the lead of. Uh huh. Um, it was not very good, but and it did, and it got canceled. Uh, and then he was also on uh one of the leads on the reboot of Prison Break. Oh Love hell that. yeah! So, yeah and he was he was cellmates with Wentworth Miller. How hot is that? How did that go? They never had sex. Oh shit! I know. I was very I'm sorry. And, and, and characters never had sex. Real life never. Well, had sex? all of the above. All, all of the, the above. above. It yeah. never happened. Would have uh, been fun to have fictionally one or non fictionally at North. Nor did I ever get to have dinner with Wentworth Miller? I was really greasing the wheel for that. What a what a wasted moment! What I could a have, waste of a husband's career. What a waste career. of a husband's career! I <laughs> yeah. gotta wonder what who Wentworth Miller's gays are. What, what his little coterie of queers? I think is. he found them late, Bo. I think he found them late, and I really? don't think there's room for for More. a Jeffrey self type. I think that you're wrong about that. I, don't I think know. there's I always think, room for Jeffrey. I think self-type. it could be. A, I think it could be a little polarizing for him. I don't know. I don't know uh, Wentworth Miller's gayness. <laughs> I think that his gayness is very like. Like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to pass judgment on him, but he de- certainly was one, was was one of those gays that came out late, sure, and sure. was really like trying, all of us, like, like all of trying us. to do the exactly <laughs> trying to do the actor thing, and like I, he to me is like a Matt Dallas. Who is that? Matt Dallas. Oh, Kyle X Y. Yeah, oh. Kyle X Y. And he has a hot husband, and they have a kid. And... Fucking hot husband. Yeah. They have a kid, and now he's like happily gay. And I like met them. Ran and I didn't even meet them. I like bumped into them at a some sort of party, and like was like so attracted to them yeah. and then like tm one of them when i was like really stoned on instagram it was like <laughs> so great L- with chatting last night <laughs> like we really got to get together and like <laughs> i you know we want to have kids one day so i'd love to like you know talk to you about your family mm. no we did not talk about any of this <laughs> like oh, I, yeah. I just was trying did they to respond have... no and i i think he saw it Mark. you know just he saw it and saw through it. Do you guys do a lot of stone DMs? To be honest with you, I yeah. Yeah, yeah. probably do it more than I should, and it oh. always is in an altered state. Oh, yeah. it's, oh, it's not good. I'm trying to get better about it. I I can't help myself. <laughs> when I have a crush on a guy, I'm talking to them in the DMs. Well, here's the yeah. thing. It's Oof. like it's like the apps are dead and DMs are the way. The DMs are the way. And, and we I'm... all know it, too, so it's transparent no matter yes, what. Yes, and I follow so many. Like, And mostly they are people I've never met and probably will never meet because right. yeah. they're like models who live in other countries. Right. But, like... but, but isn't it fun to be like, hi. Yes. I'll tell you, I met we when we did, we covered Vulture Festival for Vulture. Well, okay. And, um... Yeah, it'd be weird if you were covering it for Vanity Fair. <laughs> yeah, was... We were covering for Vanity Fair just sitting Vanity there. Um, but we um I, we met my crush who was your crush Jonathan Groff Jonathan Groff okay walk me through it okay so cuz i've actually never met Jonathan Groff i say that actually but here's like literally I have. what happened 
So we're there, and I'm nervous because it's Jonathan Groff, and I've talked about my crush on Jonathan Groff. And you can't DM one. him because he's not on social. Not no. even on social. He's yeah. one of those. Yeah. So he's coming in, and he's like talking to his co-stars because we're interviewing him for Mindhunter, which I couldn't give a fuck less about. Yeah, truly. fuck off. Um, so... <laughs> I go, I go to him. I'm like, hey. Uh, so pretend you're me and say, hey, I'm Matt. Okay. Hey, I'm Matt. Jonathan. Ooh, that's a this? firm handshake. We're still holding hands, by the way. Mm. And um, then my hand melted in his. Yeah. And I was like, Ugh, and I had to like pull it away. And like cum came out of your finger. Yeah. I, it was it was very overwhelming. And then I think we did like a D plus interview with them. Yeah, it was not. And didn't they care. didn't say goodbye to us. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was very. Interesting. It wasn't like a winning interview. Of was the day. his vibe sexy though? He has a confident vibe. He knows how hot he is. He's he a, does. He's, okay, he's there's a, confidence. Yeah, he he's a confident vibe, but also like. This there's some, and this is also equal. It just it adds to the charm in a way. But also to me, I was like, "Oh, you're just like a dorky dude." He was talking about musical theater with one of his co-stars, and it Love was like that. it was that like feels like someone like would write that in a script about right. Jonathan Groff, <laughs> right? Exactly, <laughs> like, and he's normal too. But yeah. like, it kind of I got the vibe from him where it's like, okay, he's he's seems far away because he's Jonathan Groff, and I do think there probably is like you know not not an ego there because he knows how charismatic and hot mm-hmm, he is. But he, sure. it's it, there there doesn't exist a world where we could not be friends. You know what I mean? Yep, like yep, yep. it was like that. I, yeah, yeah. That's your number. That's, is he your number one crush? Um, he's he is up there, but I don't know. He's always top of mind for you. You he, always. I talk love about him. him. I have never, ever once seen him. <laughs> In anything, because I'm so frustrated by how hot he is yeah. and his success. Ah, <laughs> I have to tell you something. So I'm too jealous to watch his work. Yeah, <sighs> he's so talented. Yeah, like, I've never seen it's... him do anything. Never watched an episode of Looking Mind, whatever that yeah, is. Yeah. I, I could not care less about Mind Hunter, but I did watch. I slogged through Looking. Um, it had its high points and low points. Sure. L- largely wasn't great, but he, I think he's I'm sure it, it might have been a great show. I literally cannot watch things with him in it because yeah, have I you seen get, Frozen? I get to ju- uh, no. There you go. Wow. Oh, so you really have avoided him. I mean, I've seen like the clips of uh, you've seen Let It Go. Let It Go. Sure, I'm not a fucking monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. I have a question I'd like to pose. Okay. okay. Are we as a gay culture getting better about gay jealousy? Ugh, I'm not. Really? I don't think so. I'm I think trying. I, I think I am. I'm trying. I'm gonna so say that hard. I'm. I'm doing. I'm doing great. Yeah, you know? I mean, we're all sitting here. No one's, no one's hit each other yet. No one wants to kill each yeah. other. I mean, it's hard because I don't know. We were, I think, we DM'd about this the other day because you talked, you had a, a video thing about like people being mean in comments, yes, and yes. trying to pit you two against each yes. other. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah, reached yeah. out, uh, yes, and because that drives me. That that used to happen to me and Colin, like when we were doing st- the stuff for Logo, and like, uh, and I, we, it just would drive me crazy because it's just so pointless, it and it's like from? why? Yeah. yeah, it's coming from someone trying to think they're like. Funny, and they want to get our attention, and they want to get our attention. Like, look, I can sass it up too, bitch. It's like, no, no, thank you. Um, But I think I I I think we're getting somewhat better at gay jealousy. Uh, I'm still working on it, though, man. I still can't. I get so jealous of everybody, of of things I don't even do. Like, I was jealous of Adam Rapon. You know what I mean? It's like I don't, I don't skate. I'm never going to skate. Well, here's what bothered me about the Rippon thing is that then it seemed like he was like trying to transition into comedy. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. you don't get to do this. No, I mean, like, I look, was worried I, about that. I too. think that you are charismatic and good at interviews. And like once in a while, yes, yeah, you can you can tweet a tweet. Sure. But um, that to me was like the world in which I think the person inside me that sees the entertainment industry and and feels like there's only so many spots uh-huh. is like if one of those spots were to be occupied by Adam Rapon in a comedic manner, I I would be bothered. By yes, that. that's true. Like I got I got like really jealous when he was like I think recently on Will and Grace, and I was I got oh. right. But I'm sure he was like playing himself. And yeah. Like, and again, he's like probably ten years younger than I am. He is a literal like Olympian. Uh, yeah. You know, there's like no, there's very little <laughs> like overlap. He's overlap gorgeous there. and white. You know what I mean? Like there's so much room uh-huh, for uh-huh. that. Kind of thing especially because he's already famous and but you know I think he'll probably settle into like a commentator career sure which is what he should be doing like like you see what Johnny Weir and Tara Lipinski have been able to do oh, like, yeah. what that's a thrill. fascinating and he hasn't like you know beaten the shit out of his husband <laughs> right oh, oh my wait God. did Johnny do that that was allegedly I think uh, Johnny it was like, I think there's some darkness with Johnny there was like a whole paparazzi uh, uh, tablo- paparazzi <laughs> tablet story of him like <laughs> 
beating i think like literally like he beat his husband oh no uh, there's something there's some darkness and i think they had a very ugly divorce and i do know this because he was on that uh twinks twink medium wait what twink oh medium. Twink medium. oh hollywood oh, medium wait, tyler tyler we're gonna call yeah. it twink medium okay, twink. what's his um, name twink psychic uh, tyler henry tyler henry yeah um he was on twink psychic yeah. and <laughs> what a great title so why bad. did they not title it that? honestly i'm just gonna write my own show called twink, twink psychic that's <laughs> brilliant I, I, so basically like he was on that show and they talked about the divorce and like uh-huh. the divorce was like somehow coming through like the other ghosts come through and <laughs> the twink psychic wait was, yeah the divorce is a ghost the, well the twink psychic when you was really like, think about uh, it he's he's it's not just ghosts it's not just ghosts. He can also like he's also like empathic. Okay. So he basically was like, I'm hmm. sensing like a lot of darkness. Like you went through a divorce, and and he was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you've oh you've you've read page six <laughs> once. Well, allegedly he's never read anything about any celebrity, which is a jump that I is oh so right long, right long. right. Uh, well, I love it when he has like the celebrities that like you yourself as the audience member are like, who the fuck is this? Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> that's all. That's really fun. Uh, but also then sometimes he'll have some that show books some huge celebrities some, like like and some Miranda. Yeah, ones, it's it'll yeah. go from like a huge celebrity to like, like Brittany Gastineau to like Lil, Lil Kim <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah yeah well that would be big for him I feel he <laughs> did he had Lil Kim and sh- he Talk was one about of the demons he was one of the few people that flat out he recognized right away uh, oh that's good he knew Lil Kim even with she, her like I third bet she face. had some ghosts she had some ghosts she, Biggie, Biggie apparently, he talked apparently, to Biggie look I'm not gonna say they they didn't say Community why Biggie, Biggie died or who killed Biggie but they kept saying in the in the previews, it was like the end of the episode, obviously. Sure. So he was like, do you have any questions? And she was like, I mean, I think everyone would want to know who shot him. And it was Holy like what they were shit. teasing it. Oh, my God. And then he, I think, at the end of the episode, and I could be wrong about this because I don't fully remember, but he did say, I don't, it, it's not coming through who, <sighs> but I will say that there was like, hints leading up to the in the days before who it could be like you guys probably could figure this out if you really think about what happened in the days before That's not and an then answer. she said something no. like yes it was really weird like he called us all into the recording studio and made us all sit in the same room and told us all to be careful like and then she kind of like said all this shit about how it was in the air that something was going to happen. Mm. But it was very bizarre. That is very bizarre. And uh, uh, also, wouldn't it be crazy if Tyler Henry is the person who figured out who, who shot, <laughs> shot Honestly, Biggie? I was like, I, was like, I thought you were going to say, wouldn't it be crazy if Tyler Henry was the person who shot Biggie? I mean, that would be way more interesting. Truly goofy. <laughs> Let's write it. On, you know, which one, of, I, one of the hardest ones to watch was actually Gus Kenworthy. Oh, because he right. was on and he described how he actually was witness to one of his friends dying oh, when wow. he was a teen and um Oof. it was like his best friend and like he got him to open up about it i'm telling you this teller henry twink he's got i mean the twink psychic is good the power of the twink babe yes. listen this is the year of the twink they say all the perfume it, genius that last year oh yeah you're right <laughs> right good perfume genius said that now that he's no longer a twink no one is and that the, the age of the twink is over wait but why is it, it was perfect? like a, it was like a funny tweet but like he was like no but it's it was very solipsistic it was very like now that i'm no longer a twink no one can be and but he is a twink still though. he absolutely is a twink yeah he's so cute how do you identify uh, not I used to identify as a twink. I'm an aged um, twink. As I well. think I'm an aged dead twink. There has to be a name for it. There ha- we oh, have now, to I coin hate the it. twunk. I, I don't no. like twunk. I almost felt myself say it, and I was like, Don't it's say just, that. Yeah, I kind of like wolf. <laughs> well, wolf. I think that's a whole other situation. Fox. Um, um not fox. Get no. away. Yeah, because we can't be saying fox. It totally. conjures up memories of Megan Kelly's. Uh, yeah, and it also oh, it, I picture birth. more like Silver Fox. That's Silver true. Fox. What? Do, how do you identify? I don't a Gaijin, but there's no like specificity right. beyond. But that's, that's the like, that's the disgusting community doing that to you. Totally. I yeah. Don't, well, I don't we're really looking at it, we're doing it to ourselves. Sure. Absolutely. We are the community. We are the community. But <laughs> I, here. I truly, I think we're at a place where we can break. We can culturally help. Not not us as like a podcast, but no. Like, I think the three of us right now, the three yeah, of us right I now, can, can fix <laughs> help fix this thing of gay jealousy. And, and look, it's it's all I do be too. There. I think, and I think it's something that's like a really good like overall thing to try to like be mindful of yeah. because it is. I mean, even even I have friends who are like, I'm not jealous, but clearly they're you clearly yeah. you're jealous. Every I think, yeah, there there it's a it's a big thing, yes. and I think it's it's why you know there's so much like you know infighting within gay mm-hmm. people. We're not gonna sit here and ignore the fact that there was a large chunk of time. I think probably in the, I think in 
us earlier coming up, like where it didn't feel like there were too many spots. Yes. And yes. so sometimes I will book something and they'll flat out say to me like, you know, John couldn't do this. Yeah. Or like Joel yeah, couldn't do this. Right, right, or like, right. you know, this person couldn't do yeah. this. And we and we love you. Yeah. But but they make it sort of clear that I was like the sixth runner up. Oh yeah. I've, you know I've, what I mean? I've, yeah, I've experienced that a lot. So yeah. it's like it's and I don't think they're meaning to say like I think what they're trying to do is be like, we know all your friends, mm -hmm. but it, but but as a roundabout way of in doing that, they're kind of like saying, like, you know, you're there, less was, there was a gay role on here, and and we thought of the most famous quote unquote person right, for right. it, right? Hmm. But but I definitely think that does, that's not any of our fault. Yeah. Have you been jealous of the queer eye guys? Yes, yes. because they're so world famous. Well, but 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 not even jealous, but also just confounded in this way that it's like. Oh, Anthony's doing a set, is hosting a show at New York Comedy Well, what the he's hell gonna, is well, that? No, I he's going to be the side. foil yeah. to Jonathan. Okay. Sure, yeah. but like, okay. that doesn't mean he knows how to be on a stage in front of people. I think he probably does know well, how to be on a stage I, in front of Wasn't he an actor? I think he, he was an actor. He, no, he, he did UCB yeah. classes. No, I'm sure he's, oh, I'm sure he's great. <laughs> Anthony's, Anthony's perfect. We love no, him. No, stop. You don't have to do that. But, um... What, yeah, you guys sure. do a show though as them or something? Or, oh, well, yeah, we yeah, do yeah. this. We, it's not as them. It's basically it's called Queer Eye Live, where we basically all pick one of the things. <clears> like I'm the food and oh, wine that's person, fine. and we yeah, pull yeah, someone yeah. up on stage and we kind of give them the. Queer and you eye do it live, and we do it live. It's oh, live. That's fun. Yeah. We I just did that. it at the Bell House last it's, week. It's uh, Zach Zimmerman's uh, brainchild, show. lovely guy. He pulled us in. Do you guys Very, do okay. live shows like every night? I feel like your Instagram is always like, "I'm here, I'm here, I'm doing this." This is where oftentimes feels like it happens to get booked all on the same time like last week we happened to have three shows I happened to have three shows yeah, right yeah, in a yeah, row yeah, yeah. and I was like god I feel insufferable on Instagram right now but it's not like every fucking no no, no no and it's yeah. not the, I'm not saying the the promotion's insufferable right. um, I would I would pull you aside don't worry but <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but, do. but you just I'm impressed you're so busy um, it's I think it's like it's, one of those it's, things. It's, it's, it's a thing where you don't post your failures. You only that, post. That's yeah. a big. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's a big uh, New York versus LA difference, I think. It's really? like, I feel like, well, I guess there are people in LA who are doing shows every night. I'm totally. just lazy. New York feels like busier. It does, yeah. I think. For better or for worse, because in LA, you're just like, oh, cool. I'm just going to be chilling at home with my friends. Right. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. guess I could go to a show at the Virgil every night, <laughs> but, but like, like who's, yeah. I'm not doing that. Totally. I feel like in New York, it's like the New York pace of life. It's like, I'm doing this. Look, I'm doing this. Yeah. Whereas the LA pace of life is like, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Okay. And what's, I'm sorry. I, I don't get I don't the really distinction. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, like, I think, I think it's more, more chill and focused. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. And then in New York, it's like, I'm doing this and this and this. Yeah. 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 It's I an energy thing. Yeah. Um, are you basically just pooped out every day in New York? Like after like, yeah. you shoot, you're just like, okay, well, I, I mean, on the search party is so great. Cause like I come for like, like long periods of time and then I only sh like shoot like one day a week Love it. and it's great. But then you can like, you're here and you can avoid people by, by saying like, Oh, I'm shooting the whole time. Yes. Reality. I'm just at the apartment and uh, watching TV. But, uh, uh but it's, th that's nice. It, yeah, it does. But it does. It stresses me the fuck out that's here. That's the dream. It's, that is the dream. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think my dream in life is to do, as little as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's For the <laughs> maximum amount of money. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I always yeah, say yeah. the reason why I want to be successful is so I can be on vacation all the time. Yeah, like, I would be totally fine with my husband, like, just fully supporting me. Yeah. A yeah. kept boy. I would love to be, I tried desperately to be a kept boy for most of my early 20s in New York, and it never, never Title paid off. So funny. Kept boy. Kept boy. <laughs> um, I think... But like theoretically, you would just find someone who'd be like, "Yes, you, you're staying with me." You, um, you but but you're saying aspirationally in your twenties that was a, a that thing. was a thing. I mean, but I also actually wanted to accomplish stuff. Now I feel like I'm like, okay, I would like happily like if my husband were to be like, like in my dream scenario, like my husband becomes like uh, Tom Holland, which would require like a time machine for him to go backwards. But, um, it but, can happen. but it could happen. And so he would be like Spider-Man and he would have like just, just tons and tons of money and I would just yep. travel the world with him. Love I know that. that sounds really just sad and no. um, <laughs> just basic, no, but no. I'm in. I'm in too, actually. <laughs> Especially because you said Tom Holland and I've been like short circuiting in my brain. I think he's so fucking hot. Oh my God, he's so hot. He's so hot. And he's so good. Just a cute face. He's in a cute little tight little body. And also cute, he's but... such a good Spider-Man. Very yeah. good Spider-Man. Like Very... they really figured it out with him. And he's and he does not strain for the American accent. He can, no. he can, no, he can do it. No, he just That's does true. it. Yeah, he just does it. And you're like, yeah, he's the boy from Queens. I love that.
Love it. Actually... Just a boy from Queens. <laughs> just a boy from Queens. He's Mar- doing the nanny reboot. Marissa, to- Marissa Tomei is my fucking hot aunt. So oh, funny. I actually have uh, have not seen a single one of those movies again because good. he's so hot. I don't want to watch it. He, I, he's good. I, in... I hear you on that. Spider Man Homecoming is a great movie. It's really good. It's and that's good all movie. about a homecoming dance. It truly, I mean, it leads up to a homecoming dance, but it's, no, really, it does. But it's, oh, kill it's me. real good. The, the twists, baby, are very good. There are twists galore. Yes. Okay, and it also really. It works as like a weird high school movie and also a superhero movie. Yeah. It pulls, you know I mean? it pulls it off in a really good way. Anyway. I think we're the only three gay men sitting around a table discussing Spider Man Homecoming. I think right that now. there actually is a whisper network of gay nerds who have seen the movie oh, and yes. will talk about it. Oh, but they. I bet. I mean, Joel Kim Booster is literally jacking off right now. I think at home listening to this. Oh, is he a big? Comic he book loves person? comic book books. movies. What really? Did I say with him? We, we went to go see. He and I went to go see Justice League together. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> it's the it's the it's the fucking Marvel <laughs> Avengers. But with Batman and those gays. Oh, go away! Yeah. Oh, go away! I don't want that. Oh. You actually don't think you want it? I mean, the movie was like a perfect five out of ten. But I'll tell you who was also good in that is Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller as the oh, Bush. speaking of cute twinks. Speaking of Oof. cute bi twinks, I know he's real sexy. Again, so someone I get I get very jealous of. Mm. But again, like again, no crossover whatsoever. But I just I think ultimately the jealousy also comes from like. I want to like have sex with this person. Absolutely, and it's <gasps> that is okay. Maybe so we, that's the root. That's what of it. it is, Bo. This is the yes. We've gotten to the. Thank you, Jeffrey. We've gotten to the bottom of this. Is conflating feelings of jealousy with feelings of attraction. Yeah, wanting to fuck what you want to be. Yes. Yeah. That and Whoa. that's why and vice social versa, media. Vice versa. That's why social media makes it all so much worse. Ugh. Right. Have you guys social media these days and the devices? And the, the devices, kids. oh my God. Unfortunately, yeah. How do you navigate? How do you do it? How do you do it? I, I truly, I, <laughs> I wish I had the answer, babe. I'm a slave to the, th- to the stuff. Are you? I'm off of Twitter now. I yes. really well. I don't. I don't like. I didn't get, like get rid of my profile. Um, but I don't. I got off. Got off my phone. Yes. I got it off my computer. Uh, I got you I doing? fully deleted all Facebook. Like, yes. Fully. Oh, forget that. That Facebook's was in like a, a manic moment, and I was just like, I'm getting rid of it. It was like, don't you want to download these like 12 years of history you have on here? And I was like, no, no fuck no. Get rid fully of it. downloaded it. Now I'm like, why didn't I download that stuff? That would have taken five minutes. But oh well. Um, <laughs> when well, you can activate it again, yeah. Easily. And then again, in a manic episode, I deleted my. A Twitter profile, yes, but then yes. again, the next day was like, okay, well, that was crazy. Right? <laughs> so reactivated, but deleted the app. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's great. I love not being on Twitter. It's Same. so fucking nice. And I'm on Instagram, but I take, I try to like go three weeks and then I delete it off my phone for two weeks and then I redownload it. Love that. I do Twitter and Instagram, not Facebook. But then for for you to for you to have gone like I, I gone through this clean break, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily. M- like I'm sure, like you were in a manic episode, but oh, like, oh, honey, yeah, but like, <laughs> oh, oh honey. honey, but I, I feel like there was just this collective cultural, sure, thing of like, okay, of like, okay, done. enough, yeah, yeah, enough, yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't really, I, I realized, like, I don't really know what I do on Twitter anymore. I was like, what am I doing to this conversation? What, are like, any what of am us I doing? adding? I try to just make sure that it's always stays light and like a funny little comment about yeah. whatever trending sure. story is happening. I do like it as like a little joke machine, I guess, but um, I certainly don't want to get earnest on it. Sure. And how often are you on Instagram? Constantly. Instagram is my drug of choice. Yeah. Like every, like how, like how many times a day do you think? I mean, we see each other on there. I mean, yeah. like, I, I, it seems like your drug of choice too. Oh yeah. Well, um, I mean, there's a lot of drugs of choice, right. but yeah. But the Instagram <laughs> is one of them. Sure. Yeah, we, can, exactly. we, can, we, can, we can find out. Uh, there, on on the on iPhones now, you can do screen time where it just really. Like, Jesus, tells I'm so you. hard. I'm so scared of this. Um, let me just let me just see. Let me just see. Instagram is the one I and I actually like because I, I enjoy putting the stories together. I like posting uh, the little. I like posting pictures. I, I like how it's I visual. fucking love the Q&A. I hate to say you it. You know what? I like the Q&A too. And I'm emba- oh, wow. I have shame about it every time I do it. I'm like, this is so self-indulgent. I'm, but I'm also, so stupid. But I, it, it, it's so fun. It's I so like fun. The Q&A it's too. not that self-indulgent because they have just democratized this for everyone to be able to do That's this. That's true. And so it's just... It's for everyone. So, but kind of, there are every so often someone you follow does it, and you're like, "Why do yeah, anyone why, want why, to ask why do you a question?" Well, you know what it is. It's like when someone does 
50 in a row. And especially yeah. when they set the thing of like, ask me about this thing, and this thing is not something you're interested in. That's it's true. like, well, I don't care about this now. Yeah. Um, okay, so my daily average over the last seven days on Instagram, oh, an hour and 55 minutes. Two hours on Instagram a day? A day? Oh, that's, that's not, not as terrible. bad as I thought you were going to say. Um, a, a day? Um, a day. And on Tuesday, this oh, Tuesday, God. I was on it for three hours. What is What happened on Tuesday? I'm, I'm not sure. The DMV? The DMV, honey. Oh, Wait, Tuesday. Tuesday how, how do you find this out? Um, you needed to have the newest oh, okay. iOS. Good I thing I don't. Oh, good thing I'm poor. Um, <laughs> I, it's, it's free. I d- <laughs> just want uh, people to know that it's fine. I don't, I don't find that particular. I don't find no, I don't think no, that's I look, no number I look, would be I looked particularly... over at Emma producer Emma and she kind of raised her eyebrows hot producer Emma raised her eyebrows you, you think it's a lot uh, well, I, I think, think two does. hours out of the 24 of the day, honey, that's one twelfth of your day was spent looking at an app. And honey, that's not a bad fraction. But yeah, Don't fraction like, shame Because that's like, it's added together, right? Yes, Total cumulative. Dog. Right, I, I bet yours true. is more. I oh, feel mine like is definitely I feel like you post more. Mm. I post. Um, I, I, I have been moved to post. But this is the thing. So Jeffrey, as someone who like was very much like, mired in the social yeah, media thing of very it where you deeply. were where you were just like oh i will have a show that lives on social media yeah on the face was yeah oh the facebook live thing face, yeah yeah, yeah. Thing. well i mean that was ultimately just because like i had literally nothing else going on love it, love um it. and was you know facebook live was a new i love that show i thought it was so cool. it was so, so fun you did it. it was so fun we i, I love doing it with the brendan Scannell, who yeah. we all love mm-hmm. uh but it was you know it was just like a lot of fucking work and like you know again you're like i'm just screaming into the ether and is anyone hearing this there you go you had such good guests too uh, guests. yeah we had really good we had selma blair yeah oh my Icon. God, I'm oh not my true God. icon. Um, who plays uh, Brendan Scannell's mom Mother. on the Heather's uh, reboot? I'm have you plan- watched it I'm, yet? I'm, it's I'm planning. Great. I'm planning to binge it all at once. Yeah. It's so good. And by the time this episode comes out, I will have watched it. It's yeah. so 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 good. It's on like night three right now. And then the boy who plays the lead, like the hot jock boy, is so cute. Sorry. James okay. Scully. He's a friend of mine as well. Ooh. I need that. He's very cute. I need Gay? more hot boys. Uh, I don't know how he identifies. See now uh, I'm just now I'm just jealous of anybody. Uh, Doesn't matter. He's no, he, 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 he's good on the show. No, yeah, it's really really good. Love that. Love I can't that. wait. I was excited about it when it was first announced, and I was crushed when I heard that it wasn't going to be coming out. And I'm Isn't very that so excited. Stupid. Well, the whole thing is this dumb because it's like, first of all, crazy. what did you think you were getting when you ordered Heather's? Yeah. yeah. Heather's is about what it's about. Yes. And if you didn't want that. Then don't order that. And also, I'm sorry, yeah. but it wasn't like there hadn't been school shootings, exactly. shootings prior to the order totally. of that show. Totally. I mean, and meanwhile, like USA is literally making a TV show of The Purge. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, that's it's so. I also think it's a complete misunderstanding stupid. of the tone of the original film, yes. which is deeply black comedy and satirical. Yes. And I yes. think it's like that's what this was going to be, and very stylized. Yes, very super, super stylized. stylized. And it's like you can't just. And this is a thing I think that we all have to kind of come around to or like start talking about more is it's like you know when it comes to art it's like think about it it's like it might actually have a comment on this thing right if you let it if you, you actually let it, let it do that, that. yeah totally. i love just talking about art with you <laughs> it's been the it's been the highlight of my Par- art on the paramount network is my favorite thing to talk art about. on the paramount network Ooh, what else is there baby so much we love the paramount network we oh do. yeah obviously <laughs> Wait, so um, many things on it. Anything you can before we get into like more central questions of the show, okay. our show. Absolutely. Um, anything you can tell us about Search Party this season, or no? They're, they're we all know KG. about that. We all know there's going to be a wedding. I think everybody knows there's going to be a, a, wedding. Wedding. a very, very, very big wedding, like a big wedding with with two iconic wedding planners, Drew Drogi and Sam Pankey. Yes. Oh, saw yes. the photos. It looks amazing. And there are some other really, really iconic gay people in it. I. I think you're allowed to know yeah you know that uh cole scola is in <gasps> is in an is in the wedding episode cole oh scola is in the wedding episode. i think perhaps perchance jill kim booster might jill be kim in the booster. wedding episode I, I believe he is uh it's uh sabrina jalice wrote sabrina? the wedding episode uh, she wrote that episode? iconic and gay she's writing gonna episode. be in it yes uh, everyone's fave i know sabrina was writing for search party yeah, yeah she wow. wrote on it this season Amazing. yeah um yeah, it's very fun and it's a very yeah so it's a really really big wedding episode and uh 
yeah, I don't know how much more I'm allowed to say. About okay, it, but that's that's good enough. But there are big. And you guys have Louis, Louis Anderson. Anderson. Louis Anderson's in <laughs> so, Louis this Anderson? season. Yes, I met him the other day. He was the, lo- he's the, the lawyer. He's Drew's lawyer. Yeah, I love it. Um, and Michaela Watkins is on it. This Michaela season. Watkins. Oh yeah, I did see that they were posting that Michaela Watkins was. Yes. On it. Yeah, th- she's amazing. Yeah. She's so good. What a good fucking show. And you're in episode four. You said I have a tiny little part in episode four, Can't and wait. and we'll take this out if they end up cutting it because it, it's one of those things that could get cut. Oh. Well, I, I don't think it'll get cut. No. I After think. some of the things you were saying off mic about the show and how <laughs> the process was, I think they. I think that. Have. Well, I can just report. <laughs> back, I can report back that um, my relationship with Charles Rogers and Jay Duplass director was really positive. And what did Jay Duplass direct? That he episode? did. Is it, he's great. so sexy. He's so fucking hot, That's and I, I have to tell you, um, <laughs> you fucked him. So I, got, we I fucked. fucked. Um, but it was weird Dang. because, like, it's weird because. I have always thought he was so sexy. Yeah, so and then weird. Seeing him in person, <laughs> it's so weird. Such a weirdo. I, I, when I saw <laughs> him in person, I was like, "This holds up." This. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. What did you think you were seeing him in person? Excuse me, and... don't erase. <laughs> Name one person who you think is really hot, and then you see them in person, and they weren't like a celebrity. Uh huh. Yeah. Because like you've Honestly, seen Jada Paws in like right. many incarnations. Yeah. Yes. He's yeah. just he's just but he's unassu- he's he's, he's, he's like, unassumingly he's unassumingly sexy. sexy. That's yes. what I mean. You know who's fucking no. hot in person? Who? Who's so also so hot on screen? Who? Justin Thoreau. Remember when we met him? I saw him in Central Park, or not Central Park, uh, uh, watching the Square Park the other day, walking Uh, his dog. So so insanely sexy. And his eyes, when he's a genuinely like nice person, and his eyes when they when when he smiles, his eyes twinkle. Yeah, but Mm. you guys are just describing hot people. Just in general. Just well, in general. Why don't you just, just why don't you just who go? Also, happen to be yeah. hot in person. So, yeah. And J. Duplass is not. St- uh, what, what did you say? He was unassumingly hot in person. He was unassumingly <laughs> he hot. Fucks he was a pop star and transparent. Like he's that's true. Whatever. Okay. You guys are so stupid. We are really <laughs> dumb. <laughs> so dumb. I'm just saying. Are I you love both J. single? I yeah. yes, I'm very single. Are you both dating? Yeah, and oh my god, you want to know something? I got dumped uh, for something Aww. that wasn't that serious, but it just was drawn out for six yeah. months. Yeah, oh, you. But then I realized, uh, longest relationship. Oh. Just in terms of length alone, it wasn't like the deepest one. Yeah, it wasn't oh. like it just. It was because it was. It was. It remained kind of uh, casual. Totally. For six yeah. Exactly. And you you know how Sudi. Okay, so we, we just listeners know we tripped on acid upstate recently. Oh, so first time. First uh, no, time. My for second me. time. It was my uh, first time. Did you love? I had a really good time. I wrote down a lot of uh, True. lessons. Yes. Good. Um, have you done? You've done it. I do. I love the LSD. Love the LSD. Uh, most recently, uh, Jordan Firstman yes. and myself and Brian Safi were. Oh, um, Brian. Tri- that sounds like a good crew. Tripped to do. on LSD at the San Diego Zoo. Oh, that must have been amazing for Memorial Day. But that seems almost <laughs> dangerous because that's amazing. Because with with, with LSD, it's like in this sort of group mindy setting. Yeah. Like all it takes is for one person to be like. Let's climb over the. Let's go say hi to that tiger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and true. everyone else be like, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, like. But I it, mean, we were the three of us were all standing on the on like our deck, and we were like, "The thing is, we're all here, and we all know that we all want to jump off this deck, but we also know we shouldn't." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, we were microdosing first of all, oh, gorgeous, and um, second of all, uh, we just we were in a very it was a very positive like loving more yeah, and I think we were all very hyper aware of the fact that we were at a very crowded zoo surrounded by children, so we. Weren't Sure. We didn't get too extra out love of control, it. but I. Uh, so you had a lovely LSD upstate experience. We were with close friends, and it was it was good, and it was healing, and it was healing. But then Sudi said something where she was like, you know, like it's all behind us now. Our first, our first uh, jobs, our first loves, our first. You know, and I was like, oh, not not for some people. And I was like, yeah. And then I t- I talked about this in therapy, unpacked it. I was like, oh yeah, like the like me breaking up with this dude was like. Sort of like, not the most meaningful, but the longest, and that's like kind of sad. Did you break up with oh, the dude? No, he broke up with me. And I was no. like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's not sad. Um, it that's not, sort of. That's not sad. No, no because it, it, it's it's the reason you say it's sad is because you're trying to compare it to like what society says should have happened. Sure. Also, how old are you? Twenty seven. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I mean, for fuck's sake. Ugh, that's don't do this. I know. No, we're gonna do this because <laughs> you're the one being ridiculous. I mean, I will say also when I lived in New York City, I never. Dated uh-huh. really? I mean, like I had obviously like a lot of like random anonymous sex or like fuck buddies sure, or sure, whatever. Sure, sure. But I never had I never had a boyfriend uh-huh. in the entire time I lived here. And then the minute I moved to LA, I was like boyfriend crazy. How did you meet Augustus? 
Uh, I met Augustus at a brunch and we hooked up in the bathroom. Love that. Yeah. It's very, I feel like that's from something. That's, um, it's... Well, yeah. that, that to me, the fact that it, the, the attraction like superseded the fact that there was a brunch happening and it was the day and yes. society well, says, no, this is, shouldn't happen. We that's had, real attraction. The night before had been at the same party. We were both at a 4th of July party at Roland Emmerich's house, like a big oh, gay wow. party. Wow. But we didn't meet there okay. and we both hooked up with other people at that. Cute. And then I, we were all at like a little hangover brunch the next day Jordan Firstman and I went and uh, we uh, the Augie was there and he was super cute and uh, we we uh, hooked up you did and it. I think uh, I think I'm allowed to say this but that Jordan was also involved in the hookup so. oh, great. Wow, so, I love that yeah beautiful. and so Jordan what and I both were like he's super cute and Jordan won't admit this, but he did say he was like <laughs> game him. on. Oh my god! May the best was he man win. Was he no, 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 no. This was god, before god. that. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna reveal something right now because I'm I'm feeling frisky as well. Oh, yeah. The first night I ever found we we found out that Henry Skaberski had broken up with his boyfriend, yeah. and I turned to Joel and and Joel said to me, "If you don't go for it, I will." Oh. And I did. <laughs> oh my is it he? God. No, he's the Henry is who plays piano, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. You've he's met so Henry. Cute. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and did you did go? for it and it was, and that was on the from that night on that and how beginning. long were you guys together two two years plus and are you still close uh yes um we are we are we're doing fine i would say You're, uh, we're, they're working together on we're stuff. working together on stuff and we work together and we've been closer than we are right okay. now but i think it's just because our relationship kind of ended and then like sort of continued in a way where it's like we're not really sure, letting go so I think so fucking, yeah. we're in the like letting go place right now okay. so we're a little bit more estranged than we have ever been and has one of you fine. had a boyfriend like since he is in a relationship um, I don't know what he wants me to say okay. but I know what I will say okay. which is that he is dating someone else and I didn't know the person very well and so that's, that's tough yeah. yeah and I think that's understandably hard for everyone yeah but that's and, and that's that sort of complicates the whole thing and was that your first like real breakup yeah it was my first relationship yeah. my first breakup and I think that it was his third okay so it was like hard for me in a way that maybe wasn't not to say that it wasn't hard for him but it was just like you know that complicated thing. Of course, like, this is my yeah. first time understanding what it's like. Because whenever my yeah. friends had broken up with someone, I had always been like, "Oh my god, get over it! Like totally. bounce back." And mm -hmm. now it's like realizing it's like a grief period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a tear. I, my first breakup was really epic and awful. And I, I, I don't know if you followed me then, but I like, like live tweeted the whole thing and was mm -hmm. very public about it. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. was with the ex-boyfriend who was on the reality show about Fire Island. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if wow, yes. all, I do remember and that. Then and, and then Jeffrey is also a Vulture recapper and then he would... And, he, and, and then it, was, I it was a gorgeous... The, the Fire Island show, yeah. It was so That's compelling to read. It was, so amazing. It was, yeah. yeah, it was in retrospect. Like, like when I had the breakup, this would have been like 2000... Who knows? Like 10 maybe? Yeah. Um, Those recaps were art. It they was, were art. Um, love talking about art with you. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, F, the breakup online was like so humiliating i think it's taken me like five years to like re like recover my brand how long ago how long um, was this this was five years ago no, six, years ago. Uh, six I think six years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then I had a, the boyfriend after him. I was dating when I met Augustus. Oh, interesting. But it was a long distance thing. That was with um, Australian comedian Joel Creasy. I don't know if you guys know I'm, him. I'm familiar. Um, he might have been at JFL. Might have been, 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 oh, been at JFL with us. JFL. Um, <laughs> but uh, I met him in Australia when Cole and I were there doing a, a gig uh, years before, years ago. And uh, came back and was like, for some reason decided because I'm so codependent and had like a good date with this person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was like, oh, we're going to be boyfriends long distance from Australia to Los Angeles. <laughs> um, and managed to do it for a year. That's great. Wow. Um, but then he was coming to visit and, and I met Augustus like and two game, weeks before. Yeah. And that. then I tried to like keep it going and I didn't want to break up with him. And or I was like too embarrassed and too like nervous. Uh -huh. So I had him still fly to LA. And then in my sleep, um, started talking about Augustus and wow. he woke up the next morning That's so... and was like, what, who's Augustus? I'm sorry. I know. I, I don't mean to like, so I don't mean to romanticize this. It was kind of magical. It feels like a fucking sex in the city. <laughs> oh, story and, yes, it does. And then get this shit. So crazy. <laughs> so then Augie and I, we, you know, we get married and then 
we're on our honeymoon mm-hmm. in Mexico this summer, and we're on a beach in Sayulita, which is a beautiful little place. Mm-hmm. It's also, um, we went there because Sabrina Jolie suggested it. It's where they met the donor, the sperm donor oh, of great. their adorable of their child, baby, yes. Wolfie. I don't know if you mm-hmm. follow his yes. adorableness. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so we went there. Amazing place. You highly recommend it. Um, we're sitting on this little beach that we found that we like hiked over to. We've met these two groovy Australians. Um, we're all sharing a joint. And then it's like, okay, we're all going to read. And then she pulls out my ex-boyfriend's newly released memoir oh. with a chapter about me dumping him for Augustus. Oh, shit. So, like, on this tiny, so... tiny beach in Mexico, someone has come from a from Australia with an Australian-published book with a full, like, six pages that I I read before to make sure, like, he, he was very nice and asked me. That was nice approval. of him. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> and I was, oh, also I was supposed to help him fucking ghostwrite the book um, before we broke up. So it, everything about it was so crazy. And so then he, uh, she's, re- she's reading the, she was, she's reading the book. And I was like, you know that you're about to get to a chapter about how I'm a horrible person. But in the end, you'll see how we meet my husband and I. And it was wow. a beautiful thing. Isn't that bizarre? That's though? insane. So fucked it's up. It's so fucked up how like every <laughs> the world is too small. Oh, too small. Too small. Too small. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, but aren't we sort of like didn't we sort of ask for this in a way where it's like we've 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 wanted to make ourselves visible and so when when we do have these moments where our personal lives are sort of like thrown back at us like from It is interesting cuz it's like I mean, I, I'm not someone who's ever wanted attention. I've never uh-huh, done uh-huh. anything to try to seek attention Absolutely. By, any, you, by any means totally. whatsoever. Very private. <laughs> very private person. Um, no, but like, you, yeah, it's like when you're like trying to like make it and make it, you know, make yourself like a famous person and doing what you do, you then when you all of a sudden like actually someone actually gives a shit about your personal life, you get really weirded out. Well, you're, I mean. So imagine being like super duper famous. Like course. imagine being like Jennifer Aniston or something. Oh, <sighs> I mean, we don't have to worry about that. I, at least I don't. I mean, you I'll, never I'll, know. I'll, I'll, I'll never. Well, I, I will never. You don't know that, though. Bowen, you don't know that. But the thing is, like you, like like you in a remake of In Her Shoes. <laughs> I think you're gonna be. Oh in my a god! Remake and Tony Collette shoes. does a little cameo. <laughs> I think actually, if we should do a remake of In, in Her your shoes, shoes, and you should play Tony, I'm Tony and, and I'm Cameron. Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is In Her Shoes is even Aniston in that? No, she's oh no! I'm thinking of rumor she, has it. Rumor has it. it the, graduate. the graduate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rumor has it is a crazy movie. It's I don't know. Crazy. How did it get made? Every like, literally, uh, I'm sure it's been on. How did it get made? Jordan and I watched it once, and w- uh, every other line was somehow something about how amazing Pasadena is. <laughs> Literally, it would be like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but there's nothing like Pasadena. <laughs> like every other line in the whole movie. How long have oh you and Jordan God. been friends? Are you guys best friends forever? Um, we are really, I would consider him one of my besties. Yeah. Um, he and I became friends probably only like four or five years ago. Oh. Yeah. Love that. It feels like a decade and a half yeah. long relationship. No. No, we like met and but clicked really quickly. Yeah. So brilliant. Love um, that we're going over to, we're go, he's coming with Augie and I and Charles to the UK for the holidays. Oh, love I that. love that for you. Uh, Fabulous. Where, gonna be some good UK? content. Bob. Yeah, very good. Um, Augie's from London. Great. Uh, and we're going to go to London for a few days, but his parents recently retired and moved to the countryside. Oh, I love and that so for we're them. We're going to Wilkshire. Yeah. Wilkshire. 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 I have to say, I think that that sounds like a very good vibe. You, Jordan, and Brian all doing acid together. I don't know Brian well. I've met Brian once, but oh, I feel like. We met, we I, met him at JFL. We met him at JFL. An icon. Yeah. An icon. And I, I like him. I, oh, I, he's one of the really greatest. Nice yeah. yeah. Everything I've heard about from him, about people that work with him and like. He's a genuinely like good person. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have like a like bitchy, mean spirited side like no. I do or like so many people I'm friends with do. He has a warm um, energy. He has a very, very warm energy. Yeah. Yeah. We were nervous to introduce ourselves he to and that he, Metro he, FL. He, and, he, Aaron, and us have shared we were, a dressing room. We were room. all in the same dressing room oh, and it was oh, like oh. this moment of like two and a half minutes went by where no one said anything and we were like, Hi. Hi. at the same time oh. <laughs> and they were so sweet they were so nice so so great. Great. Uh, did, you, did you read Aaron's book I want to so bad I have not read so it good. Good. it just, it just came out right? yeah it came yeah. out the like about like a month so ago good. the cover's amazing I listened to the audio book and I cannot recommend it enough yeah. okay I'm gonna do the audio because I wanna hear her read it It's she's great and also Guy Branham's audio book was amazing yeah. I don't oh, know I if you listened to it read the book read the book devoured it the audio book was I mean the book as well it's so good I think that there's something to that and also maybe they're just they feel like totally different experiences Experiences. Like I remember, like 
um, reading Bossy Pants like obsessively when it first came out, and sure. then like hearing her perform the book. Yeah, it was just like, oh, this is Tina. I, lo- I love an audiobook. Love an yeah. audiobook. Wait, but speaking of which, okay, so so you just being on the beach, finding out that this whole chapter is about you is so trippy and insane. That's Bizarre. insane. D- does this go in your book? You, you have to write a. a I want to write. Thing. I want to write like a essays book. I. But like it's harder to do that. Like the YA books yeah. were easy, to, like more easy to sell for really? some reason. Oh, to sell, but to write, yeah, sure to write. Arduous. I feel like I could, but I'm so lazy that again, it's not like, lazy. You've published two books, but only because I got paid to do it. Yeah, like but, but without the, getting, I, I have a hard time it. writing things on spec. Okay, but I mean, I hear you. It's a memoir. Is a memoir of yeah. I guess you can. You know that what I mean. Spec. But I mean, you're a proven quantity as an as a writer because you've been you're a published author. That's true. Yeah, I think I, I will do that at some point. Oh my yeah. god, please. Um, I would definitely like to do for that all our sakes. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, it's hard to like actually motivate yourself to do it when you're like, will I even sell this though? But you, but but there just has to has to be a chapter on that. Beach Isn't that thing. yes, That's absolutely crazy? Isn't that so crazy? It was the strangest, strangest thing. Oh my god. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a real moment where yeah. it's like I-, I wouldn't know how to explain it in my head as she pulled the book out no, of her bag. Was, I'd no, be like, no Oh way. my god. No and then way. we had and then the couple and my husband and I we all fucked right yes. there on the beach. No, just Is that, <laughs> wait. I, literally, I, I was believe. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been like, cool. I was like, amazing. How, how beautiful. <laughs> That's art. That's that, art. I love, I love art. talking about art love with you guys. Art. Love talking about art. Speaking Welcome of art. Welcome back to Art Chat. Art Chat. <laughs> art Chat is the title of that. Tart, um, yes. But, uh, speaking of art. Go ahead, Bowen. Ask the question. Jeffrey. Okay, we asked this question to all of our guests. Okay. What is the culture growing up that made you say culture is for me? Matt, can you explain the question? Yeah, so this is like a piece of pop culture, whether it be a film, uh, musical artist, mm-hmm. something that you experience in the pop culture lexicon that like you feel when you look back, you're like, yeah, that set me on a course or defined me in a way. Okay, I would probably say, can I say two things? Yes. Yeah, you can absolutely. Okay, you I can say three, one. you can say four. There's no fucking rules here. Number one, Death Becomes Her. Oh. Yeah, very first, uh, yes. Very, like, I think like the Death Becomes Her, like a dark comedy um, you know, incredible female, strong performances, um, just the entire aesthetic of like the LA of it all, the Hollywood of it all, uh-huh. the New York musical theater of it all. Elements of competition too, Elements I think of, is of big competitive. for yeah. Yes. I mean, we all have our own Madeline Ashton. Yes. Uh, uh, that was very, very instrumental. Uh, that's the culture for me. And then the Rosie O'Donnell show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The Rosie, Rosie oh O'Donnell God. show was bigger for all of us than we can even realize. Because the, it actually introduced us to so much that just flew over. 100%. Our head. And it was so, inha- it was so inherently gay without being gay like yes it, was, it really was it captured like the city i i wanted to move to and the, yes. the world i wanted to be in without even really knowing it i it, rosie o'donnell for me is like i don't know if, if we've ever talked about this i'm i'm obsessed with nothing more than that like yeah. than, than her rosie o'donnell is my number one obsession like, i love that rosie's anything amazing. else if if her name if no matter what it is if she's involved if it's an article a movie an episode whatever I will. I have both Christmas so, albums. I will do anything. Uh, my favorite show is The View. Uh, sure, I've and, heard of it. And <laughs> when Rosie peeks into The View, like because every ten years she's like a superstar oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of The View. Oh right. yeah, it's never better when than oh when never. She's on oh it. fuck! And literally, people don't understand that like never. even the negative aspects of The View, you need that. Oh uh, yes, Rosie on The View is unprecedented television. Unprecedented. You know she she. Uh, Co filled in or whatever for Julie Chen the other day on the <gasps> talk. Oh, really? My God. We well, have how to did watch. I miss that? Well, it was what you know that period when like I think it was right after Julie Chen had like officially left the talk, yeah. and uh, they were bringing in all the different you know, co-hosts or whatever. But it was the day of the Kavanaugh hearing. Oh, and so it, it didn't, beautiful no, TV that yeah, probably was. And, oh my and God, no one got to see it. Which I think says a lot because it oh, got swallowed oh, oh, up. because and... it got swallowed up by that. Yeah, yeah it certainly does. Say a Didn't lot. air. Uh, but she's always been right about everything. She and she's Look always back. yes, I agree. And she's always, always, always just like been like unapologetically uh, flawed and like yes. broken. Yes, and I love that. Um, but the thing about the Rosie O'Donnell show being this very queer thing that a lot of people don't give it credit for is yeah. is 
It's huge because think about like fucking even having Sutton Foster on doing Gimme yes, Gimme. She like they had, musical she had, theater all the time. Yes. She had John Cameron Mitchell on promoting Hedvig and the Angry Inch uh, off Broadway and like explain. You can find the clip on YouTube. It's fascinating. And she's trying. She's like explaining the show. And you know she's not even out at this point. Right. No. She's explaining the show to this you know very very mainstream America audience. Right. And they're like laughing. They like laugh at some point about like. The description the of the change, show. Yeah. yeah. And Ugh. she like stops and is like, open your minds for God's sake. Like, this is like a piece of art. Okay. Wow. Art. Art. Uh, but it, it's it's so interesting to watch. There's so many moments like that. The like she with Sandra Bernhard, she with all yes. of her like this was you know, not Michonne's even like was on hype. that show singing Waiting for Life yeah. to Begin, an iconic oh my yes. God. She would have people on also like that were like doing shows at the duplex, no joke. Wow. And be like, oh okay, God. this woman's doing like a, a Ethel Merman tribute show at the duplex tonight. Go see it. And then, like, on the most, I mean, that was the biggest show on, on daytime. daytime. At the Crazy. Time. And f- yeah, and fucking Sandra even was she doing like Ars Nova shit at the time? Too? Yeah, it was like, like post Sandra being like, you know, the big Letterman guest. God, and yes, like, right. yes. It was like her career like dipped down a bit. And yeah. like, but she, it was all of those kind of people that were that she'd have on that uh, were the first time I ever experienced any of those people. And also, Rosie, what I love about Rosie is she loved the stuff she loved. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? No one she loves was... anything more than she. Unapologetic. Yeah. She when she when she discovered Harry Potter, basic as oh it my was, God. she was fucking in Harry she Potter. Loved and like it. the episode the Survivor. Where Jake, Survivor. The episode when JK Rowling came on yes. Rosie O'Donnell, that was huge. And I'll never forget when she started weeping. But even before Barbara. Barbara. Oh, the, oh, Barbara, the, the Barbara, Barbara episode. episode. The Barbara I just want to say that when you walking through that curtain, it's like my own mother. Uh, coming back from the t- it's the most beautiful thing. So I, emotional. All those clips are online. You should watch the whole thing. Why don't they? I don't know why they don't just put the whole thing like out that you could buy. The same with just Oprah, great. like on on iTunes. It's a. It it's should a, be available. It's a cry and shame. It should. Be. There's a great DVD though of the Rosie O'Donnell Show season one, Rosie looking back, and it's they basically all the best clips of season one, and it's like Rosie and like sweats and like uh barefoot sitting in like an armchair cross legs um like watching the clips and like giving you like backstage behind the scenes kind of in, like uh descriptions of what happened and stories and she's taking it really seriously and she's really earnest and it's great oh my god the, it's so crazy i think the i think it's actually pretty similar to hillary honestly the way the public feels about rosie i yeah. think because she's been so tainted by the i mean by the trump thing? my mother my own mother even said like before before we all kind of woke up like that six or seven years ago i'll never forget my mom said like I love Rosie, but I don't know. She seems really opinionated lately. And it's this thing that yeah. seeps into the public consciousness that women aren't supposed to, to speak mm-hmm. out, aren't supposed to have strong opinions. And when she had a strong, like, liberal opinion, yes. it, it turned people off, especially yeah. someone who was beloved by mainstream media. Everybody. And not only that, but, like, I think news organizations and, like, uh, you know, like, networks, uh-huh. they get angry at you when you are divisive or opinionated yes. because – you don't appeal to everyone and their reading ratings get bad. And so she was totally thrown under the bus. Yeah. yeah. And, and she, fu- and she turned down like an insane amount of money. And I think it really pissed because they wanted her to keep doing that show. Yeah. She only did like four or five seasons. Right. Right. And then they offered her, I think like a hundred million dollars to do two more seasons. <laughs> and she was like, I don't need, like, I already have so much money. I've just made so much right. money. I'm not doing it. And I think, like, within that world of, like, the corporate old men who run everything, like, they were really, I think that, like, was such a slap in the face yeah. to everything that they think <sighs> matters. Uh, she, yeah, she's fascinating. If you've never read either of her books, Find Me or Celebrity Detox, Find Me is this amazing book that was during the Rosie O'Donnell show where this woman basically contacted her adoption nonprofit aid, like company yeah. uh, and was saying she, uh, she was a pregnant teen and needed help and da 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 and then basically Rosie got very involved in trying to help this kid and it realizes this isn't a spoiler this is what the book's about uh, that the person has is multiple personalities um. and, and is uh, contacting her as like five she's wow. so like five different people she's talking to are this the same real person story? yeah wow. and like she got so involved she like flew this person to New York oh. I'm assuming they're probably still in touch it's a beautiful story and then the celebrity detox book is about when she left the view Ah. And it's about like deciding to the leave the view. To, yes, there's no. I mean, the fight between Rosie and Elizabeth Nothing on better. the View. Iconic. That's a moment forever. Yeah. yeah. The the and the, you can see Rosie. Yes. Her notice eyes. Yes. That the split there's screen. a split screen, and you. It's just this it's a, moment of like. 
it's real pathos. It's it's yes. and, and Elizabeth, you can see the moment Elizabeth deciding to be yep, who, who she, she was going to become. Yes. yes, and and they she had even said Rosie said like you know I took Elizabeth to her first Broadway show. Yes. I really tried uh, with her, and in that moment, Elizabeth really threw her under the bus. And when Rosie said she was cowardly, like that came from her soul. Oh, like yeah. and that's you only get that on a show like that. The View, baby. The views, but is it? The I mean, it's the best. I, I, but I, it's not great. Anymore. Well, I I actually think it's having a, a little bit of a, a, of rena- a renaissance. A renaissance. However, I think the fact that things are going so well right now at the show is not necessarily what we need yes. from the show. Yes. We need conflict yes. from the show. I mean, we need someone. I think they thought so that's that what, Megan that's... McCain was going to shake it up more than yeah. – than she Abby. has, but the fact oh. of the matter is, Megan McCain, while she's conservative, she's also reasonable, yeah. and she's a, a friend to many liberal. So you're saying causes. they they bring on a Tommy Lahren? Type I of no, person? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that something. And Abby Huntsman actually is pretty moderate. Abby is very moderate. I actually don't. I mean, I hate Tommy Lauren, and I you know it's such a conflict to a conflicted thing to think like you know, should you give her that platform, but. There is something about like getting to see Whoopi Goldberg explain how the fuck the world actually works to yeah, this idiot yeah, on a yeah. daily basis. And I think what happens is I I think they the conservative on the show and this is just kind of true. They've always been they've always been kind of an idiot. Yeah, sure. Like sure. Hasselbeck, she always needed her fucking copious pieces of papers yes. printed oh, out yes. at the desk. Dumbass. Megan so, yeah. McCain is just very smart and and like educated about the kind of things that she is educated about. I think some of her opinions are a little fucked. Oh, of course. But, but she's also an idiot about the things that she's not read up on. I, I, I would agree. Like, like Michelle, a friend of the show, Michelle Collins will tell you that. Yes. Just... Oh, Michelle Collins, what an Michelle icon. She's the queen. Iconic. She's one, the of the, queen. one of the truest icons of all time. Truest yeah. icons was robbed. And also, this, was cam- robbed. this campaign of her taking Megyn Kelly's slot is yes. fucking real. Please, make it happen. Well, there's no bigger happen. idiot than Megyn <laughs> Kelly. Because yeah. the thing about Megyn Kelly is she's not even smart enough to be aware of the to fact know that, that she is a racist. A, so yeah. it's like, yeah. if you, you are a racist. You know yeah. what, yeah, Queen? Yeah, yeah. You are a racist. Queen, you're a racist. You happened. She is very good she's at what she does. She's had the history of all this. Yeah, She's a very good Fox News interrogative mm-hmm. prosecutorial reporter. Prosecutorial. She was very good at remaining calm mm-hmm. while stirring the pot on her guests and getting them upset and being like, well, you look ridiculous. Bye. She's very good <laughs> at Fox News type journalism, yes. but she is the opposite of warm. The well, idea sure. that she was ever going to succeed on, as in a morning show capacity is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's yeah. so crazy. And didn't they, did they shorten... Kathy Lee and Hoda for her, or was that a different slot? Um, it was a different slot. Um, okay. they just, but the, I can't believe that the Today Show would be so dumb as to give an entire hour to her. I think NBC News is someone needs to be fired over that. Yeah, that, that but she's officially out, right? It's officially canceled. Okay, yes. and she will have a different she's role. Being, she's being bought out. No, she's being bought out well, by she, all of it's, by it's, all of NBC. It's unconfirmed. Yeah. Uh, it's well, uh, we should say this is going to come out later. As of this moment in time, yeah. it's unconfirmed what's going to happen. To her, the latest um, uh, report from NBC News is that she is still currently an employee of NBC News, but there are all obviously lots of leaks and discussions about how she's being bought out of this yeah. $70 million yeah, contract. Yeah, her deal was so fucking crazy. It was yeah. huge, and I'm like, what exactly? Rosie, Rosie turned down 100. Rosie turned down 100, <laughs> y'all. Rosie turned it's just like I don't know. I I don't know, guys. I stopped trusting Megyn Kelly when she said Jesus was white and <laughs> Santa yeah. was white. Idiot. It's like, what did you think you were she's getting? But the, really and the delivery of the Santa one especially is just so funny. She's just so like, but kids, Santa, Santa just is, is white. white. It's like, <laughs> what are you, Where are you, also, what bitch, are you doing? Also, bitch, what kids are watching your show? <laughs> <laughs> what kids are what up? Kids. It's just so crazy. Megan is Megan me. is the anti Rosie, truly. I mean, more than more so than Elizabeth. Yeah, Hasselbeck. I mean, do, it's just such a shame we don't have like. I want a Rosie like MSNBC. Late, like yeah. at nighttime show right now. There was, I think I read somewhere that there had been talk of that at one point, but like, well, her health isn't good. Uh, well, I think she's because she had that heart attack, she, I think, is like, I can't bring yeah, myself TV. to get so stressed out. That's on why TV she left yeah, yeah, yeah. On the view. The, the view, well, she the came back to the view and she did one year and she was like, I actually have realized that this is a stressful show. Good for her. And it wasn't a full year. I think she left. She was. She yeah. left by like Christmas. Yeah. And you know what? We, we can't ask that much of her. But she's engaged. Good. Again. She's getting married again. Love it. Um, to some like third wife. Really, I think fourth maybe. Oh my so, god. No third. You're right. 
uh, third. Yes. There was Kelly. Um, uh, and then Michelle. Who, yeah. yeah uh, passed Kelly and Michelle. Michelle. Kelly Where's her Beyonce, <laughs> honey? Get her Beyonce. She is her Beyonce. You're right. You're She's her own Beyonce. Right. Um, Where's her, her, her new wife is like a really gorgeous police officer in Boston. They've all been beautiful. Oh my yeah. God. A Boston police officer. I also officer? think people get weirded out by Rosie because she's a woman with masculine, like, like yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like that that I think is what really pisses Donald Trump off about yes. her is that like he sees parts of like she's an unapologetic like, lesbian. Yeah, yeah, but he wants that kind of strength and yes. power and he can't have it. I Rosie, just, Rosie I has hate BDE. That, I hate that because he's president and has done this thing in America that there's like 50% of this nation that fucking hates her. It's so Isn't unfair. it but what that must be like to Crazy. be her right now and be like my bully my biggest bully in the world is president is the president president? so crazy it's something i think he is obviously very offended by powerful women who he's never going to fuck yes well that's the thing is there's yeah he has no use for her because he you know i i believe that if well this would never happen but i would be be thrilled by nothing more than if rosie and donald trump i mean that debate would be (laughs) Oh, I thought you said if they. I thought you were to say if they ever had sex. Oh yeah, they <laughs> I would not thought. be thrilled. No, I, I, I would, be, would deeply be so upset. thrilled. I would be, be deeply, deeply upset. upset. Never happen. I was thinking about 2020 the other day, and I was just like, no. God, what do we have? And I, then I was thinking, like, of course, like what the natural thing would be to like want to put a woman up there to like show him what yeah. the fuck is really what in a way that Hillary never could, just because there was so much public decisions already being made about R- Hillary, and she could never get out from under that, but. I was also like, you know, I don't know. I, I Part of me feels like we do need to put someone on his level up there. And that's why I was entertained by the Oprah thing. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, I, that. is That's officially not happening. No, though, right. No, no, no. We don't know. I mean, she has said no. And you have to believe when she says no, I do believe Oprah means no. She's starting the book club again. That's all I'm going to say. Is really? She? Yeah, she said she was. She, she, I think she, she alluded to that. She was like, way. oh, if Reese Witherspoon's doing it, I better start doing <laughs> it again. <laughs> Reese is, is all what over is, the what is, uh, And I love that John is taking Reese to task on this voting stuff. What? That, what? that Reese has not has only done like a basic get out the vote thing and not has not fully um, done the Taylor Swift thing. And like John who? John Early. Oh, oh really? I didn't He's been see tweeting this. at Reese Witherspoon being like, hey, can you actually like speak out against Marsha Blackburn and can you actually endorse the Democratic candidate in Tennessee instead of just doing like fucking milk toast get out the vote shit? Oh, I haven't seen that. Again, no Twitter. No Twitter. Twitter. But I'm, 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 I'm a stranger to all of your opinions. There, but... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, I think... Um, what if you came on the show and it was like a conservative podcast? Oh I would... I, honestly, I would be very excited. <laughs> you would be, so, you would, it would be, be great. It would be real. It would just be really interesting. It would just be so... It would make you guys like even more interesting. <laughs> like it would just be like what, what we need to be is what, conservative. What conservative. are these guys all yeah, about? What are, what are you about? guys after? Oh my god! But somewhere out there, like that, was, that we don't know about. There's a gay ver- There's a gay version of also us, but they're conservative. I would love to. Wa- I would watch a scripted show about you guys playing a, like a conservative like podcast. Somebody needs yes. to write it. Someone, someone Some, write it for us. We're, we're not. Somebody out there. I'm not writing anything on spec. I've established that. <laughs> and, <laughs> as we've said. And look, and, and if and if you hire Jeffrey to ghostwrite something for you, then you'll then you'll date and break up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Isn't not... that isn't that just great? <laughs> I mean it is like I a think it's great, just great it's a great like story. It's such a good story. Yeah. I can't believe that. It's it just it's the perfect kind of narrative. And especially after I was so horrifying and humiliating to my ex boyfriend when we when we broke up, like mm. when I was like twenty five. It, it's the per- it's just the perfect payback. It's just no. You think you think it was payback? I think there's def- there was definitely some karma to it for sure. sure. Mm, but, sure. Because I mean, like when I was broke up with my first ex boyfriend, I was so like un hinged yeah. on the internet to him and to his the guy he started dating right after me I was so horrible I think I still can't view his Instagram mm-hmm. uh, I think he somehow blocked like my IP from my phone wow. I can't I can't like so, to look D- that's Chris Salvatore do you know who he is I don't well, I see the thing is I, I well, no. w- when you were sort of narrating all this I did not care for him yeah no 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 Th- this look <laughs> this was like a time where basically it was like my first boyfriend and it was like the the ex-boyfriend who, it was like the the first time like a hot like guy who looked like from like a Sean Cody yeah, video yeah, ever yeah. paid attention to me. And yep. I was like so excited by that, sure, that sure. like, you know, Dawson from the old Sean Cody Dawson. videos. Do you remember him? Yeah. Well, Dawson kind of, was Corbin wow. Fisher. 
Corbin Fisher. Yeah, 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 Dawson, yeah. Dawson and Lucas. I don't and know. One, one of the greatest L-U-K-A-S. videos of all time. Remember they, they, did, yes. they did a whole fucking Czechoslovakia trip. They did, they, they like, yes. did like a whole Europe trip and they just and it, fucked in different hotels. Yes, and it yeah. felt oh like God. one of them had decided to date me and so I had a very That's meltdown. Lovely. And then when we broke up, he dated someone that who was also, you know, again, like a very hot, like Corbin Fishery looking person. And then I, I just couldn't handle it because all my greatest fears were personified and so wow. then a 25 year old lost his mind so i think the karma of that <laughs> a 25 year old lost his mind. mind that's the title of the essay um, in the book. <laughs> but i think the karma of that led to uh me me having a chapter written about me in joel's book but there you go i mean you survived all of it i've survived you've, you've it. Out the other side and isn't and, it so funny that like you were again fully mired in the social this performative yes on display performative social, social media yeah and now it's like we are sort of in this weird post state that I never thought we would get to ever. I yeah, like, oh, w- this is here to stay. We were. This is how we're going to be. It doesn't feel lives. like it is here to stay, does it? It feels like it's sort of starting to break down a little. I mean, bit, not. I there's an element to it that will always be here, totally. but like that, like really performative, uh-huh. like. 2007 yeah oh, this, was 2012. This, would like, this would have been 2012 yeah but that was the peak of it yeah yeah like that i feel like that kind of thing is kind of dying down yeah love it D- just Could i have, welcome that me too um, i mean yes I, mean, yes. I, I have to be honest with you. What, since we've been talking about porn, I've been thinking about my porno that I've been watching lately, which is, Who's your porno? do you guys know Carter Dane and Alex Meekum? Of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. Of course. The video, the first video of them, um, like, oh, they're, they're, they're dating in real life. They're they're, and they're in, in love yeah. in real life. Oh, that's so the, sweet. The video, I don't love that in porn. The video, <laughs> the video that they did together, you can literally see them fall in love Aww, while they're fucking and I actually sweet. kind of love it. It's like, it's like Rosie and Elizabeth on The View. You see the <laughs> moment where they decide what they're going to be. You see the where Wait, who is your number? Who are your porn stars right now? Who are Carter you? Dane is, I think, the hottest person in the world. Although I do think I'm a big uh, Ricky Roman is. <sighs> I like Ricky Roman. I'm a big Levi Carter fan. Oh, I know Levi, Levi. Carter is a little uh, small for me. Oh, see, I like that. Yeah. Um, I like uh, I like this dude, um, Robert Axel, but he's sort of fallen off. But he would do a lot of massage porn stuff. Oh, that's nice. that was like a fun little like my only little sort of vertically kinky niche. But then... Was um, massages? Was just, was just massages. I was like, oh, cool. This so is fun. Kinky. Not, <laughs> ever, not kinky at all. Right. Like, totally have vanilla. Have you ever had an erotic massage? I, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love them. You have? Some, you've yeah. never done it? Well, one time it was going in that direction and I think I was like, I don't know. Oh, really? I, I didn't say no, but like, it. I think... I think treat like, yourself, treat you guys. Yourself. It's it, I think had, had I looked over and made eye contact once, I think it would have happened. It's so oh, sex hire positive. Hire someone. Hire someone. It's so sex really? positive. It's great. Masseurfinder.com is my favorite. We went to, to the strip club uh, like two oh weeks ago, God. and I ended up giving $140 to these strippers, and one of them I like really went too far with. <laughs> strip <laughs> club in New York? Joel and I, Joel and I compared notes dimes. afterwards, and we both were bad boys. You were both very bad. They both got swindled. From these, from these men. Oh, you got swindled. Um, <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> I just couldn't believe how much money I didn't have that I gave them. Yeah, but I'm I'm a big uh, Darius Ferdinand guy. Oh, I love Darius yeah, Ferdinand, very hot, yeah. and he has He's a boyfriend so as well. He's he boyfriends boyfriend? with. Is he boyfriends with Ricky Roman? Oh, I have no. He's wow, that with would be the them. hottest thing ever. Also, to be honest, I got I gotta say. What's his name who takes pictures at the gay events that we go to? Oh, um, Tate Hansen. Tate Hansen. So nice. I one time thought I was going to get to hook up with Tate Hansen because I. He DM'd me on Twitter, which I was like, all right. Hello. And I actually, because what happened was a friend of mine had hooked up with him. And I was like, oh, it's not that hard to hook up with Tate Hansen. (laughs) And so I started following him on uh, Twitter and, you know, did the thing where I like faved a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then you made yourself known. He slid into the DMs. Yeah. um, And we made plans to have, I was here shooting, I think, Difficult People. Uh And uh, he made, we made plans to like hook up that or meet up that night for a drink. And we were like texting back and forth. And I was going to meet him at Barracuda because he was judging some sort of like lip syncing contest. <laughs> Thank God. Love it, love it. And we finally meet up when, and we're texting and he he's like, OK, did, I forget what he said, but I was like, OK, shut up, bitch. Uh, <laughs> something in text. And he like wrote back this long thing that was like, please don't refer to me as a bitch. That is really hurtful. I won't oh. take I won't take verbal abuse. <clears throat> but then we still we like then I still <laughs> went to Barracuda to meet him. And then. He like sat in front of the stage to judge the lip syncing or drag or whatever it was. 
and I like sat behind <laughs> him. It was so strange, and he didn't speak to me the whole time. What? I was so. It was. It All was right. Barely, well, that sounds like he was, was either going through a tough moment or is fully crazy. I think I was going through a tough moment. Maybe wow. it was dark. It was dark. Wait, what's the name of the guy who has like a huge ass and a huge dick? Um, no, every single every, person we no, just no, named no, no, the no, qualifier. You would know of... him. You would know him. You would know him. Anyway, ugh, I, th- I feel like his name is like Hector or something. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, we we he like hit me up on Grindr one time he was like come to my hotel room and I literally I chickened out just because I knew the sexual experience would be harrowing harrowing you didn't do it no yeah I get it I love talking about art with you guys I love talking about art with you speaking guys speaking of art let's move on to I don't think so honey okay. this is our um, wow it's our classic segment that we have on the podcast <laughs> it's, it's really I mean it's a classic you Can, guys are you gonna be in LA in, in early December uh, it dep- Yeah, I'm in LA for two weeks in December, and then I go to the UK. Right. We, we'll do- if it's it, well, I really want you. Joel and I are going to be doing I don't think so, honey, live out there, and I want you to be on it. Where are you? I'll be working. He's working. Oh, so right. Joel Kim Booster is going to host with me. I guess this is a good time to tell you guys get your tickets to I don't think so, honey, live at the Bell House on November 30th, as well as I don't think so, honey, live on December 5th at the Regent in downtown Los Angeles, and we're also going to be doing um Queers Live at Joe's Pub Queers live on November live. 26th. Mm, okay. You won't be here. At Joe's Pub Monday night, we're going to be recreating a Divas Live, but it's not going to be like we're going to do their songs. We're going to do our own songs. Yes. That has me, Bo and Yang, Joel Kim Bo- No, Joel's not doing it. Um, Cole Josh, Stola. Aaron, Cole. Larry Owen, Larry, Peter. I mean, uh, that is a line. Up. We're going to be it's having be a really fun time fun. and more to be announced. And presenters as well. Presenters as well. Yeah. Non-musical presenters. Non-musical Just presenters. like Jennifer Aniston Just presented. Like presenting you guys? Yes. Yeah, like, you know, come out and do a little <laughs> bit and present us. I like it a lot. <laughs> it's so self-indulgent. And yes. it will be to a charity... That we have yet to be decided. That we have, that, that we have yet to that determine. That is the epitome of self-indulgence. It's truly the, the question feature on Instagram. I like it. Uh, but in live. in live show form. Um, so I guess it's time for I Don't Think So Honey. I do have one. You have one? Great. Um, this is yeah. Matt Rogers' I Don't Think So Honey's Time Starts Now. I Don't Think So Honey, this Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have no. not seen it. I have seen some of the reviews. Apparently it's terrible. I could have told you that from the fucking god-awful trailer. <laughs> I do not think so, honey, this Brian Singer garbage bullshit. Because I'm sorry, but why did we give him this movie? movie Ugh. why if you and also i don't think so honey all these awards people being like it could we you nominate it for an oscar no it's not here's a reason directed by brian singer yeah no thank you also i don't think so honey again not that it, this really matters seconds. at this point because it's just going to keep happening but rami malik is playing freddie mercury a famously queer person like we couldn't find any queer actor to do this not that i super really care about this because i do always think an actor acts but the thing is like guys it's freddie mercury throw us a fucking bone seconds. I have to also say, I don't think so, honey, the CGI in the trailer that pans out to the crowd, bitch, it sounds like, it looks like a million people just copy and pasted. Like, if you're going to have a crowd shot, get a crowd or just cut the crowd shot. I don't think so, honey, this movie, it looks bad. It probably is bad. I'm not going to see Bohemian Rhapsody. And that's one minute. Amazing. Girl. Girl. Yeah, I agree. I'm not, not, no thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just a no thank you all around because it's like, and also, I didn't even mention this, and this actually was my biggest problem with it, but the trailer tries to insinuate that there's going to be like a heterosexual romance in the movie. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is like really inappropriate. It also, like, I felt like the, they have him wearing like fake bad teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, so, they're almost comical. It's like, it's, it's such a strange detail to like really t- like drive nail home. in. Yeah. It's even worse than like Nicole Kidman's nose in the hours. Yeah. It's like, stop. It's, it's weird I'm, because it's like we didn't know what Virginia Woolf's nose looked like so we don't <laughs> need this. And also, like, if you're going to fucking highlight something about Freddie Mercury maybe the fact that he was queer I don't yeah. know maybe not his teeth maybe not the that, fact yeah. that he was queer makes him more dynamic did you see the the little clip of him uh, in an interview where someone I think it was someone from Into mm-hmm. um, uh, the, the, the Grunger magazine um, uh, asked him uh, would you call just a simple question like not even a would you asked call asked to Rami or Brian Rami, Singer would you call Freddie Mercury a gay icon would you consider him to be a gay icon right. a, a gay figure and then Rami just tried to dance around it in some what? bizarre way. He was like, you know, I wouldn't qualify him as no. anything. And it was, uh, it's just like, wait, what are you I'm doing? I'm sorry, but you're playing Freddie Mercury. That means you've stepped into the gay space. Yes, babe. Regardless Put a dick in of your mouth. And what you think. Totally. And it's, yeah, it, it's like, what? I mean, are you doing some risk assessment here with saying, like, oh, I can't say call him a gay icon, otherwise people will think I'm gay? It like, who what? is oh, that's really erasure. Upsetting. And it's... we joke about that a lot on the show, but that's erasure. That really is yeah. erasure, yeah. and you can't 
deny what brought Freddie Mercury into this world, his talent, like, and and also what took him out of this world. And it's Bo and Yang's. I don't think okay. so, honey. Time. Um, wait a minute. And his time starts now. I don't think so, honey. This bangerless era we're in with our pop stars who all just want to deliver you a vibe Speak. and not actual hooks, bitch. Mm. Speak. I love the new Robin. It's amazing. But also, like, this conscious direction that all of all of our pop songstresses are going in where it's like, okay, we're giving you, we're giving you a mood. We're giving you a vibe. It's mm. not going to be anything memorable. You can't really bop to it. We're not going to give you bops is truly crazy like it decentralizes this whole thing in music where it's like okay now 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 we have to 30. rely on these like we have to discover a bop through a competitor like we have to like search for that through other people like that is more work on our part and like we don't have I don't have the emotional labor to do that no. you know what I'm saying and also this is not to like dictate their careers in any way and like their artistic vision is their vision but I want like god I want like a solid like Teenage Dream type album, yep. like Dangerous Woman Five type seconds. album, where it's like we haven't had that in a long time, and who will deliver us back into that zone, um, into that space? I'm so curious to see, and that's that's one minute, and that's one minute. I have to say, it's like the, you know, they're all deciding at the same time to do this sort of like bangerless, mm. thing. like sparse minimalist thing. Where the fuck is the hook? Wait, did you like the Kim Petras Halloween album? Loved, I, we loved yeah, it. Halloween I loved album. that We too. loved it. We think Kim Petras is popping so much right now because she's the only one yes. making efforts to give you hooks. Yes. I'm I'm very, I'm, I did, I had not, I, I was not aware of Kim Petras until everybody was posting that album mm -hmm. uh -huh, and telling uh -huh. you what, and, but then when I heard she did a duet with Elvira, I was very mm -hmm. sold. Yes. And I was, I'm very into that album. I got my sister and her friends into Kim Petras. I was, I just like did this experiment. Like it was like two months ago. It was like the late summer and like, you're like, does this I appeal was to with all them sectors? And I, mm -hmm. I was, I was, we were driving out to, we were going to go to the Montauk lighthouse and I, I was like, or no, the Fire Island lighthouse. And we were driving and I was so like, so many just, lighthouses. So many a lot lighthouses. of lighthouses on Long Island. It's actually real culture number 40. A lot, lot of lighthouses, lighthouses on, on Long Island. Island. <laughs> and um, uh, we were driving out there and I was like, let me just slide on heart to break. And I put it on, and they kind of like eight out of ten responded. Then I put on, I don't want it at all. And they loved. They her. were like, "What is yeah, this?" Yeah, yeah. And now they're obsessed with her. Love that. Yeah, love that. She's love great. that. Amazing. But see, see, she's the old. She's she's in a very um, sparse field, and that's why so she's a power position. Power position. A power huge. position. Um, God bless. Um, okay, Jeffrey Self. Okay, it's Jeffrey Selfs. I don't think so, honey. And his time starts now. Okay, I don't think so, honey. Snakes. <laughs> I am so <laughs> against snakes. Mm, I'm, speak on it. I hate fucking hate snakes. I think that like if if like you could like push like a button or do something like chemical in the air that killed all snakes I'd be for it. I hate people who have pets pet snakes. I think yes, they're disgusting. Yeah. disgusting. They're weirdos. I don't trust you. Yes. They're people but the, what really I don't think so, honey, more than any fucking seconds. thing else is those fucking people who stand on the street with a giant snake no. with like a twinkle in their eye Why? and you can pay them to take pictures with like we're holding the snake. I don't think so, honey. The snake doesn't want it. I don't want it. The people pass if I don't want it, that you are a selfish <laughs> creep. <laughs> I saw this happen in Times Square the other day. It was oh cold. I thought, I don't think so, Five honey. <laughs> no, thank you, snakes. And that's, and that's one, one minute. minute. Oh, I wow. love that. That was really good. And you know what? I don't think so, honey snake. I fucking hate them. And it's just like, you know, it's like the one animal that I truly think, you know. Why are you here? There are no, here? I don't. Anybody who is coming to defend a snake is not someone I want to have in my space. Do you Why even, do we need them? We don't need them. You, we do not need them. <laughs> it, someone must do something. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you something. If, if you, you No snakes means more rodents. Fine. Uh, honestly, fine. Honestly, I'd be fine, fine with it. Okay, but then, okay, and then you're, are, well, are you a fan of snakes on this whole trend now, thanks to Taylor, is this the snakes on jewelry thing? I mean, I don't, I don't care, care about, about that. Okay, great. But there like, you go. But like, for example, I was like at a friend's the other day and like, they like, they had ca a snake casually brought out a snake. No, who is this no friend? reptiles? And I was like, this is this isn't okay. If and I made them put it away. Are they in the industry? Yeah, that's not acceptable. If you're in the industry and you have a snake, then some you're hiding something. It's just it represents something. You know the way that you can like when you meet someone who has a pet bird, like you're like, oh, I know everything I need to know about yeah, this person. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. No, thank you. But like. <laughs> A pet bird, at least, is like pretty, and everybody's like, "Oh, that's nice." 
But like a snake, like, no one though. wants that. Zoos need to get rid of their snakes. Yeah. Uh -huh. You never know when you're going to turn a corner and there's going to be one. When we were on, on acid well, yeah. at the San Diego Zoo, you know, we're looking at the some sort of thing that's swimming in the water and it was a <laughs> crocodile, alligator, some shit. And then you turn and then in this aquarium was this just giant, hideous, oh. garbage pile of a snake. No. And the way they reflect light is oh, disgusting. Oh, gross. And they're just, they're pointless. They offer absolutely also, nothing. the way they yeah metabolize the things that they eat is absolutely frightening and if you ever gotten eaten by a snake i'm so like sorry you know that thing where like the, that fucking i couldn't stop looking at it that that article about the guy who like fell asleep on the street in india and like was swallowed whole by like a cobra no and like he was killed obviously just no we're like so we're so sorry to, for that man. also boa constrictors like, oh that wrap around you and, no, and literally words. constrict you until you suffocate and then they break your bones no disgusting. thing i don't think so disgusting. Uh, disgusting thank you i yeah so fuck snakes any animal that has an instinct to kill you painfully i don't think so honey yeah but again like i don't mind an alligator crocodile i, I do mind them. i mean i don't want to like hang out with one or like i would never invite one. them no oh god no if like i had a dinner party of 12 no there would not be an they alligator be on the list, or a crocodile on that list Absolutely. but i do not think they i wouldn't i'm not like let's get rid of all the crocodiles alligators but snakes i genuinely am Let's start a movement. Let's get rid of them. Really? So they're on the top of your list. And if you could get rid of every shark in the world, you'd be like, no. I don't. I mean, you don't. Again, I don't like sharks, but like, I like like reading about sharks. Not, I, and not all sharks are harmful. Sharks, sharks. sharks get a bad rap. They're at least interesting. I also think snakes are probably stupid. You know, sharks are at least smart. Snakes, there's 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 really nothing redeemable. There's not maybe more rodents. I get your what you're saying. There would be more rodents, but I would rather be like in a bathtub of mice than like have to like look at a snake on. Because at least anything. mice are also mammals, and therefore you can like get on their level. Yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. get on their level. That's huge for any animal. You have to get on their level. Yeah, yes, on their level. Absolutely. Absolutely. culture number ninety one. For, for any, any animal, animal, you have, have to, to get, get on their, their level. level. <laughs> um, that was a very that was a that was a, that was a that felt like a classic clean. I don't think so, honey. It was really good, and I've never thought about. It's one of those I don't think so, honey's where it's like you haven't thought about it, but you're like, oh my god, I've known this all my life. Yes, like yeah. I, I've known since I was little. I don't think so, honey. No, no, get them out of here. Get them out. out of here. And we're we. I think it, we are entering a time of snake shaming. If you have a snake, who are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, reevaluate. Honestly, reevaluate. It's it. because of Taylor. She is making the snakes popular. Well, then this week everybody was like because Brittany. 25 years oh, right. or whatever. They, they were showing the, I don't know what, I, I, all I know is Britney 25 years. <laughs> Britney Spears was being talked about this week and I was sort of like, I don't, you know, I don't yeah. care. there are literally bombs going off all over her. being sent. But she, I, 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 they were, then they were talking about that, that snake and there were pictures of that oh. snake again. For some reason, that snake doesn't bother me as much because the color is kind of pretty, but, and it doesn't look like, a, like the color makes it look not, not like a snake. Snakes. But no, I still think that snake should be killed. No. But like, yeah. I just, that one doesn't, piss me off as much but i just i don't want like i hate when i'm scrolling through my feed and there's a snake <laughs> just of any kind how long do snakes live too I'm not long sure. i'm not probably, sure. i feel like they probably live a long time i'm wondering if that britney spears honestly for you snake snake is still alive are you um, looking it up I'm, I'm looking it up right now well, see how but then there's gonna be a picture of a snake on your phone live. and you're gonna have yeah, that that's okay all I, I won't, he doesn't I won't feel as bothered you. by snakes as you do so i think he'll be able um to, to okay take it. how long do they live uh, boas usually live for 25 to over <gasps> 50 years. Get a life. Many colubrids have a lifespan of between 15 and 25 years, and smaller species live for 5 to 10. So the slave for you era was 2003, 2004, so I guess we can sit, or 2001. Two, uh, uh, 2003, 2003. 2003. Are we sure? Because 99 was... 99, oh, no, 2000, 2000 was, was Oops, I Did It Again. 2002, I want to say. So we can safely assume the, sh the snake may be alive. Maybe alive still. Uh, it, it depends on how old it was. Was that a boa constrictor? It no. Was, no. No, that's a... I think it wouldn't have been safe on I her. Forget, python. Yeah, python. it was a python. Uh, yeah, that's the, it wouldn't have been safe on her. Like, go yeah. away. No, don't bring that into a building. There don't was an interview with building. her, and they were like, would you ever do that again? She was like, oh my God, no. <laughs> yeah. She was like, it was really bad when I did it. And Apparently I, I, they I didn't smell like bad it. too. Oh, they no. smell there's bad. No, there's no reason. There's no reason. For we that. had, I had like a little kid's birthday party and like on a, they brought out a snake one time and it was like, why you did get, you, you have you, a little could, kid's birthday party? I, I, it was like when I was a little kid. Oh, like, I think I, that you were hosting a children's <laughs> birthday party. Yeah, I was like, come on, kids. I'm having a birthday party <laughs> for you. Maybe don't admit that on, on air. Yeah, 
Yes. <laughs> no, but when I was little, someone, one of my friends Ugh. had a birthday party, and we could all get pictures taken with like the big yellow snake. Yeah. It was like sitting on our no. shoulders. And that I think is it's somewhere. disgusting. And I think it's wrong too for to the snake. To I mean, the look, snake. I hate snakes, but I still think they should be allowed be forced to do that. Yeah, Thank it's you. like they should be alive with their dignity or murdered with their dignity. Just put them all <laughs> on an island, like uh, literally Australia is like like full a Jurassic of Park. For yes, snakes. exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, Australia is actually perfect for snakes. Well, there's to. tons of them there. But because there's tons of the, the, the kangaroo populations get out of control. Unfortunately. So that maybe the snakes can bite the kangaroos. I don't like that. I'd rather that. more kangaroos than more snakes. Oh, but but they, apparently kangaroos are like not so nice. Oh, no. They're a nightmare. And they're, really? and they're, they're, they're yeah. basically, I mean, Australian people consider them to be like rodents. Yeah. So I, they're like the deers. When you go to Long, when you go to Fire Island and there's like so many fucking deer. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but they like literally pu- they can punch you they're they like really you. aggressive whereas a deer would, would just run away from you oh my god i just remembered that a kangaroo is a marsupial and therefore it's not a mammal and you can't get on its level uh, you can't get on its level and it's so important i me. had a kangaroo as a publicist for a couple of years <laughs> and, and she just she didn't understand it just couldn't just get on my, her level yeah, no she just we could never communicate she didn't so get it she didn't get she it. didn't quote unquote get it <laughs> that kangaroo <laughs> did not get ahead of the the chapter in the book. No, she did not. She did not. Um, um, before we spin off into a whole other podcast about marsupials and reptiles and the animal kingdom, we should probably wrap up. We should wrap up. Although, although talk all, talking about these animals really it makes me want to trip on acid someday with Jeffrey at a zoo. I was yeah. like, I would love to. Literally, the two of us should fly out there and you yeah. can re- recreate your and also, Jordan. Brian I also and hate Jeffrey. zoos, but Let's I enjoyed go. it that day. Then we'll love just that. take acid and not go. San Diego Zoo is very good. <laughs> take um, acid and go anywhere else but uh let's go to a fucking aquarium although sea animals scare me more really? sure yes because they're unpredictable the way they move the way they move uh jeffrey we love you so much i love you love guys you. so much thank you so much for having me i just i'm such a fan we've been trying to get you actually. i know yes. well because you're here and i'm you know we, you know what it's different i was gonna try to do the live one in la but it didn't work out i was out no of worries. town hopefully december okay let's make that happen let's make it happen um we okay. love you so much jeffrey thank you so much uh please uh check check jeffrey out on on every great gay show Truly difficult people, 30 Rock, search party. 30 Rock, classically a gay show. Classically a gay show. I mean, actually, yes. There's yeah. there's, there's a queer aspect some to co- it. Yeah, some good gay characters. I love that. Um uh well and we have to close out with a song, as always. Somewhere, Somewhere over the rainbow. We can't do this. There's <laughs> a we can't do, we can't this. do this. Bye. Bye. Forever. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram, at Forever Dog Team, and liking our page on Facebook.